Welcome back, guys. We have a very special guest this week. It is somebody I have known from the first year I moved to Las Vegas back in 2011. Uh, very, very special person to me. She is a former Playboy centerfold who has gone through. She's been in, in the shit with me for the last 10 years, so I'm super happy to have her on here. This is Miss Jesse Preston. How you doing? We're still going strong. S still going strong, a, man. The longest relationship I've had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because when I tell these old stories about how Vegas used to be, you know all the stories. Like all you remember, of it. You remember all It was that. a different time back then, for well, sure. I mean, so here's one thing, right? I try to explain this to people because the you know the the closest corollary to this city is to me is Austin, but not today. Austin 20 years ago. Never been. Austin, Texas 20 years ago. If you were a local, you could go out you go to a bar with a bunch of your friends and then like they would treat you better because you were a local because we had a tourist come in there all the time, right? And then you would it would just be one of these things where if you're a local, you get into clubs for free or whatever. And it, this place now reminds me of that. But but when I first moved here, when you and I were first living here, when we first lived here, there were like three clubs. Yeah. Right? There was a Surrender Marquee in Excess. That was it. That was it. And, and then later on, you know, obviously Hayes opens up. But like when we'd go out for an industry night, we knew everyone was at the bank on Sunday. We knew everyone was bank. everyone was gonna be at Hayes on Thursday. The we, knew, bank. we knew everyone was what gonna was be. What was the one at, in the Luxor? Um, uh, LAX. LAX. Oh, dude, what was that? What night was that? Sunday night or Monday night? I forgot. I think it was Monday night. And then uh, we knew everyone was gonna be at Jet <laughs> on Tuesday. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Like there was no, but there or was pure. Oh, they were gonna be at Pure on Wednesday. We knew everyone was yeah. gonna be at Pure. On, like there was no mm -hmm. question. Like you didn't have to go date. You would just go out and I'll every see local. so and so here tonight. Yeah, I know you, that's where they're gonna you be. Have no, you have no, yeah, no. And then there were no atmosphere modeling agencies back then either. So girl, like waitresses were just going out on their own to just fucking get plastered mm -hmm. with, with, like as locals. So you'd go out and there'd be stunning women everywhere, everywhere you'd go out every night, and they wouldn't be like separated, and they wouldn't be like the girls are now. Where I'm not going out for not a, for less than hundred bucks an hour. That's why I moved here. Yeah. I used to come here every summer with my parents for at least like six, maybe seven summers in a row from middle school through high school. And I always went and laid out at the pool. And I thought to myself, this is the place that has the most beautiful people I have ever seen in my life all in one place. And I was like, I will move here one day just so I can stare at the beautiful people. That's exactly how I felt when I was in the military in 07 and I came here for a full week. And I remember on the weekends just being like seeing normal people. But during the weekdays, I would go out to Tangerine. You remember that shit? Back in, uh, it was in, uh, what was Tangerine? It was inside of, uh, not the Mirage, Treasure Island. It was a club called Tangerine. But it was, dude, this is a long, long time ago, right? Or, or I'd go to Tao on a Thursday or something like that. And you'd go to these clubs and I was like on the weekdays and there'd be industry tables. I'm like, that, that is the hundred hottest girls I've ever seen in my life. I just saw 25 just of them. Just chilling. Just sitting there. Yeah. I'd, I'd go to the Rhino, before, listen guys, the Rhino before Instagram was holy shit. Because the thing is back then there was like really hot girls were dancing. Like that's what they were doing to make a lot of money here in Vegas. And there weren't that many strip clubs. And so girls would come here and you'd see girls flying in from Scottsdale. Yep, uh, to uh, come for the weekend to the strip. San, they'd come in from uh, San, San Francisco, Scottsdale. They'd come in from LA or they'd come in from San Diego and they would go dance at the Rhino. And then they'd go back to their job working as a receptionist at some place in fucking Palo Alto. <laughs> And, and then they would just strip here on the weekends and it was crazy. And you go in there and it was like, I've been to the Playboy Mansion three times. The girls were just as hot at the Rhino in 2011 as yep. they were at the Playboy Mansion. It was madness. So it was very different. But like now things are a little bit more spread out because there's so many mega clubs now that you don't see quite the same thing. And then the girls all need to be paid to go anywhere, which I totally understand. But man, I, I cannot express to people like probably from 09 to 2013, Vegas was a very different place. Very different. Even back like before DJs became the rock stars. Yeah. When I first moved here, the clubs didn't have host DJs or any, it, it, it was hosted by like either right. actors yes. or random like celebrities, but it was never the DJ being the draw. So Victor Dre, that was his idea. So Victor Dre, a lot of people don't know, he designed Excess. I remember, yeah. And um, he, you know, he, and he's obviously the owner of Dre's. He's from uh, uh, Casablanca, Monaco. That's where he's originally from. His son uh, went to Southern Methodist University where, where I'm from in Dallas. His son now runs Dre's, Dustin Dre. Um, but they, but uh, Victor was the one who designed Excess, and back then, this did the DJ booth was right there by the entrance, mm -hmm. and they weren't when paying. You come down the steps. They weren't paying even fifty grand for a DJ. Okay. Now, I was with Jason Strauss at Excess the other day. I know it sounds crazy, Jason Strauss at Excess, but he was there with some client or whatever because uh, Calvin Harris was playing for was spinning for a million dollars. They were paying him one mil for one night during CES. And, and I think Jason w wanted to see what was the crowd like. And mm -hmm. I was curious too. It was like a mil. Like just imagine opening a business and you're uh, in the hole a million dollars at, at 10.30 p.m. 
you're already in the hole a million. You have to make that back up. Like that's, imagine that level of pressure. But that's what's happened now is that the DJs are so fucking expensive and the whole thing has become a, a concert every night. I remember when XS had Calvin as their resident, like during the first few years. Yes. And I mean, it would get busy. It was really busy, but I don't think it was like packed or super sold out. And I think he got yeah more and more famous. So it was actually uh, Wayne Crane who started putting him at Surrender first. And then Wayne, Wayne Cra- did that? Yeah, Wayne oh, Crane. I didn't yeah, know that. yeah Wayne, Wayne and I have talked about this. Wayne kind of discovered Calvin before he was famous. The same thing with Skrillex. Skrillex, before he won those three Grammys, uh, uh, Wayne was like having the new artist would go at Surrender. And if they did well at Surrender, then they'd move them up to Access. Make yeah. sense? And then they'd, they'd be playing with like. Yeah, because we never had DJs at Trist. Yeah. It was always our house DJs. We never had anybody big. And then when they turned Trist into. Um, intrigue mm-hmm. they had marshmallow yeah but i think that was like their biggest dj that they had there yeah yeah those were i mean that's different, just one. completely different time it's just a, and, and then to build your whole like social scene off of this thing and it's just one of these things where like it never gets it never goes away like people do if you go to tiesto like you'd think people had seen tiesto enough but they don't like tiesto the other night at uh heidi klum was was at fucking uh zook the other night hanging out with Yes, what Tiesto was. I know it's crazy, man. It's fucking nuts. It's like they they never gets old. I was I was went to one time to see Tiesto on stage, and um, what's her face? She's a resident there. Um, oh gosh, who's the resident? The singer over at um, Resorts World. I can't remember what her name is right now. Singer. Yeah, I, I forget. Anyway, she starts throwing pizza into the crowd. Oh gosh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll, it'll it'll come to me here in a second. But anyway, just yeah, I've, you've seen wild shit like that. Obviously, the Steve Aoki throwing the cake. On the cake, face. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, or Bulzarian like doing the the whole thing where he was on a uh, the raft, the raft at <laughs> Hakkasan. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. That was wild, bro. Those were the days. I'm yeah. telling you, it's not like that anymore, though. <sighs> no, it's it's gotten commoditized. I still like it. I mean, as a local, they still take care of you. Like I don't, I get everything I want for free. And when I have girls come into town, and if I call somebody and I'm like, hey, some big influencers are coming to town, they give them ho- hotel rooms. Like that part is still cool. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it just this place reminds me a lot of Austin 20 years ago, where it was just like there was a, a group of us that w- lived here and worked here, and they were all really good looking. And and Austin now has turned into a fucking Starbucks. It's just one big fucking commoditized McDonald's. Star- it's Mc- it's Mc Austin now. It's Mc nothing Austin. like it was. I, I heard people. There's private jets that pull up for South by Southwest. Let me tell you, motherfuckers. What? 25 years ago, South by Southwest, you didn't have a wristband. You just walked up drunk on Sixth Street, and the and and some of the some bands were playing live, and you didn't pay to go to any of the shit. And then you'd go to this like crazy ass um, Alamo uh, draft house. You would go to see these movies, like these. You'd watch porn in there. It was crazy. It was so different back then. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I, used to, I lived in Austin for nine years before I moved here. All right, so here's the thing. I'm, I'm curious with your situation. You were, so you you shot for Playboy very young, right? You were like 18? I was just turned 18, You yeah. just turned 18. And so how did they, the, you were on MySpace before that? Is that how they found you? Like how, and by the way, you were engaged at 18? Did that also happen? I was engaged, yeah. yeah. So it was. Uh, what were you in, Florida? I was still in Miami. Okay. They had, um, they had my MySpace. They had reached out to me. I had turned it down. Obviously, I came. So from you had a, you had nine hundred thousand followers on MySpace when you were seventeen. Yeah. Okay. I had a MySpace since I think I was fifteen or sixteen. Uh huh. And then I didn't really take it serious. I didn't know what social media really meant, and I just kind of posted things. I spent more time editing my layouts and making custom backgrounds than actually taking the social media serious. Custom backgrounds on my, you remember, people don't remember, MySpace you could make. Oh, I made my own code. Yeah, I made, yeah. You, you could write your own, you could literally write HTML in MySpace yep. and change, it's not like it is on, on Instagram I now. changed everything, I made these borders, flicker, and this color, and sparkle, like I did it all, I spent more time doing that than anything else. Yeah. It, but um, Playboy had reached out and I turned it down and I, like, I think I've talked to you about this before. I came from a very religious, conservative yes. parents, <laughs> background, family. Um, being Jehovah's Witness, and or should I say being forced to be Jehovah's Witness while I lived with my parents, I knew that the Playboy thing was not going to fly. But shortly after moving out of my parents' house, I ended up um, in my own apartment and they reached out to me again. And I was like, uh, I still don't know. On the third try, they asked me, hey, do you want to do this like this special edition? Do you like this is going to be like a really good thing? And I'm like, I asked the guy I was dating at the time who ended up being my husband later on um, how he felt about it. Wait, wait, you were dating someone else, though, who wanted you to do it or did no, want you to do it before? Him. Okay. And right. his mom, 
We were all at the dinner. His mom was like, it's always been my dream. Oh, his mom. Okay, his that's mom. what was confusing about the story. His, no, his your mom, mom wasn't cool with it, but your no, mom was. No, his mom, she was like, it's always been my dream. I want to live vicariously through you. You should do it. It's an honor to even be asked. And he's like, yeah, go ahead and do it. You might as well, right? And then everyone kept trying to tell me like, oh, it'll make your, your name blow up. You know, even if you don't get paid a lot, it's still great for just the publicity side of it. And I was like, okay, so I did it. And I ended up hating the photos. Yeah. I mean, I was 18 years old. I still had a lot of baby fat. I didn't look the same. I mean, that was my first pair of implants, and I didn't know what I was doing mm. when picking out implants. So I picked out the ones that I thought looked good on somebody else without knowing that it would change when you put it on my body frame. Mm. I hated them. Mm. I hated them. But yeah, so I did it. And just like they said, it wasn't a lot of money. I ended up spending more money to get my hair done and highlighted and to look pretty for the photo shoot than I actually made for, off of it. But for a while, it got me a bunch of gigs, hosting clubs in Miami and like little stupid background gigs and movies and shows and shit. But other than that, nothing major came of it. But again, I never pursued anything with it. It was just something that I did to say, okay, you know, I, I did something kind of cool in my life that I was asked. It was yeah. an honor. According to people? No, I totally so understand. I did it. All right, so a couple things uh, I want to ask you. Like you were, you said you before you were nervous the first time you went to go shoot with them. By the way, did you ever shoot with them again? Or did you just do that one centerfold? I just did that. I mean, it was in one day we did seven or eight photo shoots all in one day. Mm. So they were able to use it for a bunch of magazines mm. from that one day's shoot. Okay. But I never went and did it again. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't want to go back into that again. And when you were doing the shoot, Hugh Hefner was on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. right. He kept telling me not to be nervous. And he told me like it's gonna turn out great, and that I, he promises that I'll I'll feel just comfortable and fine with it. And I think ten minutes after he said that to me, I was like, okay, cool. And then every time that we had to take a break and the photographer had to change something on the camera settings, I was just walking around naked. And then I forgot that I had been uncomfortable before that. Sure. And I was so used to it already at that point. Everyone was so nice. I was like, oh yeah. And you stopped wearing clothes since. <laughs> I haven't worn clothes since. Pretty amazing transition. Thank you, Mr. Hefner. Appreciate that. <laughs> Rest in peace. All right. So uh, this is the other thing. I, I not you did not expound on this, but you said uh, also you were not proud of your Playboy days. Is there a reason why? There's some stuff that you did that you weren't proud of. It's not that I wasn't proud of it. It also hindered a lot of things in my life. It became, even though at the time, my husband said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, do it." It then became a fight later on. And then I would try to do different kind of modeling, and it was, no, absolutely not. Your body is made for lingerie and bikini, and that's what you need to stick to. Oh, so you tried to do runway stuff, and I, he wanted you to do... Not just runway stuff, but I wanted to do more lifestyle, more like anything else. Mm. And there was, um, I don't even know, oh shit, what was the name of that website, where as a model or a photographer... Uh, model Mayhem? Model Mayhem. So I was on there, and I would see these these photographers or companies saying, like, we're doing a campaign for this or for that. And I applied for two of them. One of them wrote me back that I wasn't the body type that they were looking for. And the other one wrote back that they don't accept Playboy trash. Playboy trash? Who wrote you Playboy back? Playboy trash. I need to know It was who, a jewelry company. I need, you, I need you to tell me who the fuck that was, dude. It was a jewelry that, company. And I was like, that's... wow, okay. And then from that moment on, I noticed that more and more people kept saying that because of my ties with Playboy, that I was not what they were God, it's completely for. the opposite now, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? If you were actually because the the like Playboy doesn't have models anymore. I they know. don't. They, the last Playmate of the year, I believe, was 2019. Jordan something. I can't remember what her name is, but like that was the last one they ever did. And then after that, they don't. They do like a quarterly magazine or something to that. Effect. By the way, it was Katy Perry who was in the DJ Katie booth Perry. Yeah, with I saw the Tiesto that. Yeah, and yeah. was throwing pizza at people's face. I remember now. Um, <laughs> I was right there in front of it. It was fucking crazy. She just like flipping like a Frisbee, flipping pizza onto people in the, in the pizza front of Pizza oil it. splattering in Yes, it no, was. Hey, listen, I was oh, hungry. Pissed. Yeah. All right. So so that was the thing. So it hindered you in a lot of situations. And what, what I, so your, your, your husband wanted to continue to like overtly sexualize you. And that was his problem is that you wanted to try to do a different type. That's, that's to me, that's crazy. Let me tell you, when the marriage dissolved after 11 years, the things that he was throwing in my face, I was like, were you not the one that said that I should wait? What? And even friends, like mutual friends of ours, yeah, that were like, "Are you guys getting divorced? Like seriously?" Yeah, they would talk to him, and then they'd come back to me and be like, "We have no idea what's going on up here." Yeah, because the things he was saying didn't make any sense. Yeah, so I just kind of, you know, that marriage was not meant to be. I'm actually so happy that I didn't stay in it. 
I don't know because I I was so much younger than him and because I was so young when we got together, I don't know if I would have necessarily left because I feel like I was so scared of what it meant to be. Was he significantly alone. older than you? He was like five years older than me. Okay. But you got to 18 to yeah. 20, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's a big difference when it comes to that part. And I moved to Vegas with him and I don't have family out here. So to dissolve a marriage and be by myself out here, no family, yeah. nobody else, that felt scary. Uh, so I, I, when I met you, you were still married to him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is like 2011, 2012. Yeah, we got married like 2009. Yeah. Um, so you were married. Oh, man, you guys were married to 2019? We were married, yeah. Uh, to, no, to, from 2000 and... No, I met him 2005. Okay. And from 2005 to 2017. Okay, that's when you got divorced. Yeah. Okay. That Okay, I remember this whole situation. Uh, I'm curious, like... When you think about the things that would held you back from today, I don't think that we hold the same standard. Do you? I don't. I feel like everybody has an OnlyFans now. I feel like it's been more. Well, it's not just that. It's just like I've mentioned this before. Our our former president fucked a porn star while his wife was pregnant, and they elected him. Like like we had a, a woman, a guy who was a decathlete, transition to be female, then run over two people, kill one of them, and four months later be. But, Caitlyn Jenner's Woman of the Year. Look it up. Don't have, don't look at me. Like I'm crazy. They didn't even test her to see if she was a DUI. Like if she was drunk, nobody even gave her a breathalyzer, and she killed someone. Like we just we have a guy who literally goes to, fi to jail for 15 months for securities fraud, and they make a fucking movie about him. Like I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. A movie about doing quaaludes and sleeping with like t hundreds of prostitutes. And we love Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street. He's the greatest thing ever, dude. B you remember Billy McFarlane? Or Bobby, what was it, Billy McFarlane? You remember he he, he does Fire Festival. They just completely like rip off people ninety million dollars. Don't they have a Netflix? They did yeah. Netflix special on Fire Festival. He was on Nelk Boys the other day. Now he's a fucking celebrity again. I don't know if you guys heard this, but the Tinder swindler is teaching a course now. <laughs> he's making more money doing that. He's than teaching he was swindling. a course now. So yeah, you're like that's that's what I actually mean. It's like nobody cares about it. you. Logan Paul walks into a, a forest and there's a dead body there. He gets canceled off social For media. Recording it, and now he's the biggest male influencer in the world, right? Like no one seems to pay for anything. Like Mark Furman uses the N-word multiple times, you know, before the, the OJ Simpson trial. He's a fucking correspondent for Fox News. Uh, uh, <laughs> Colonel Oliver Stone is like the chief architect of the Iran-Contra affair. And then afterwards, he's a he's a fucking correspondent on Fox News. My point is no one's seen, like literally you could attempt to kill the president and if you get free, somebody will hire you to do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, the girl in Tennessee, who had sex with all of her coworkers, the police the officer. The police officer. She got offered 10 grand to do one night, like the to strip, strip yeah, to strip, strip somewhere. Teases. I promise you that girl will start an OF and make 200 grand the first month, the first year, the first month she's in there. Who wants to see, I don't understand. Or again, but again, catch me outside. $50 million. At least she's pretty though. Da that makes sense. She's da pretty. Danielle Brigoli made $50 million. You know what's so funny? So I don't know if you guys saw, Dr. Phil is canceled now. Dr. Phil is canceled. His last show. season. Yeah. His last season. Dr. Phil is probably worth 400 million. The, Danielle Brigoli it right now is more famous than Dr. Phil. Yes, she is. Yes, he, yes she is. If you look at, if you were, wanted to go look at Google search terms, she's more famous than Dr. Phil. And her, the whole point of that episode was what? To punish her, to make her feel some stupid. sort of consequence <laughs> and stupid for what she did. And her behavior made her $50 million because she didn't listen to Dr. Phil. Why would you catch me outside? How about that? Oh she says that shit. And like the whole row, ha ha, we're just laughing. The minute she turns 18, she's so overtly sexualized that like everyone wants to see her on her fucking OnlyFans. It's crazy crazy so the point i'm trying to make jesse is overtly all those things that our mommy and daddy told us and the and the pastor in church told us don't do those things or you're going to have to pay for it don't do those things or nobody's ever going to want to marry you don't do those things or you're never going to get a job turns out all that was bullshit sorry mom all of it was bullshit do you understand what i'm saying yeah all the things that we weren't supposed to do uh, i'm not going to say her name because you, you know who she is there was a waitress who worked at um the bank who was one of the biggest porn stars in the world beforehand do you know who i'm talking about Stephanie Knoll. And and so she she was one of the biggest porn stars in the world and she goes off and like literally goes quits doing porn, works over the bank, and then the guy gives her a fucking wedding ring like the size of my head. Afterwards, she has two kids with him. Like nobody pays for anything. That was the point I'm trying to make. Like there are no consequences for your actions anymore. There's no accountability. There's no consequences, I don't know, but accountability are correct. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's what's different. So when you're like, oh, I was nude in Playboy, that's like, oh, well, okay, well, you can run our PTA meetings. It wasn't even that I was upset with being nude in Playboy. I was more upset with not looking good and being nude in Playboy. Really? I wish, like, because they said to me, you know, the, the vagina stuff is not really 
Playboy's thing. They don't yeah. post that. Yeah. They're like, it's going to land in a lot of shadows. We purposely position things yes. so that it falls in shadows. And it, I could see my liver. Yeah. When the pictures came out, I could see what I ate for breakfast that yeah. day. There was a lot of... Vagininess. Vagininess. Yeah. It was not as conservative as they tried to make it seem. So I was a little bit upset with that, but... Do, do you realize that today, compared to Brazzers, Blacked, Reality Kings, Blacked. whatever, Com. like Playboy is a conservative outlet. Yeah. Like they are, tra tra they would be considered a traditional conservative outlet. Playboy, which came out in 1953, is a conservative outlet. But these new ones, like Bang Bus, are <laughs> they're considered wild. You understand, like how far the Overton has. I looked swim. at Amber all crazy the day when you guys said she's a penthouse pet. I was like, oh, yeah, she's hardcore. That's <laughs> that so was crazy. Like the that's, first thing to my head. No, no, like, oh, no, damn. Like, but that's another thing. Like Amber Rose is a penthouse. She was penthouse pet of the month, December 2022, 20, and she was on. Access Vegas, the last episode, and she uh, she's she gets hired everywhere. She did a, a bikini competition yesterday. I saw you the one at Cert. Fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of these things where, and I, I think we can get into this later. You know, whole, whole red pill thing. I think it's great, but a lot of dudes are like, oh, these women are so empowered that they're they, they've become delusional to the point where like they can't pick a normal dude anymore. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. they have access to Instagram has made it so that they have access to like superstars. I'm sure the number of celebrities that have snuck crept into your MySpace and your IG profiles is probably more than you can count. Okay, we're not going to say anything. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we're not going to talk. Sounds good. I will tell you this: I got hit up on MySpace by a pussycat doll. Okay. And she asked for a threesome. Yes. But. Obviously, I was with my husband at the time. Yeah. And I was like, mm -mm, I'm good. But I thought that was really crazy to have a, a pussycat doll ask me to come hook up with her and her at the time fiance. Like, uh, oh. So we, we can skip around here. Also, Jenna Jameson asked you to have a threesome. No, she used to hit me up all the time and ask me like, girl, what did you do to your butt? I was like, I've never done anything to my butt. I'm Puerto Rican. That's what it is. It's, yeah. it's called being Latina. Yeah. Arroz con gandule. But she, she was always really nice. And then... She came in to access with uh, Tito a few times, and every time she acted like she didn't know me. <laughs> I was like, hi. And then she'd get home, and she'd message me, and she'd be like, it was nice seeing you. And I'm like... Do you know what that is? <laughs> like, okay. You know what that is? She's probably just drunk. No, it's pills, man. Or no. Whatever. I don't... Really? Or she drinking. was always so quiet. So the thing is, what, you're, what you just expressed, that was my experience all the time. I would have girls m message me. Oh, this still happens to me today. It's like, oh my God, I love all your work. I love your show. LOL. And I see them in person, and then they act like they don't know who the fuck I am. And I don't know if it's drugs or fucking anxiety or whatever. Maybe anxiety. It's not most girls, but there are some girls that are like that. It's just so weird. And then like, oh, or the, the other one that's crazy, it's like they, they act like they don't even know you. They barely even acknowledge your existence. And then you leave and they're like, where are you? Where are where, you? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where are you guys off to next? I'm like, you didn't even <laughs> speak to me while I was dead. It's like such a, it, it's more of an LA thing. Yeah, I hate that shit. But it is a, it is one of these really strange things. But So you, your affiliation obviously you've never done porn but like your affiliation with you've mentioned this before in a, a different podcast you're friends with a lot of porn stars obviously live in las vegas yeah. going to avn and stuff like that um and then you you mentioned jenna jameson would hit you up do you do you go to avn do you do you go to the convention i was supposed to and then everybody had COVID, so i was like i'm going to stay home i'm gonna yeah. stay out of this one because alex had COVID too everybody got COVID from being i think they were all shooting the day before because everyone's in town so yeah. like oh let's all fuck so they were all shooting and then they all gave each other COVID. Yeah. And then the entire COVID thing just went rampant at the conventions and the red carpet. So could you fill us back in, Alex, the whole situation? I'm going to stay out of that one. Okay. So we're not going <laughs> to talk about that. Alex is doing well. Alex is doing well. And, doing you, well. and your affiliation with Alex was? He, he, that's, that's... We're not going to talk about that. Like, <laughs> okay. Alex had some affiliation with pornography. That's all we're going to say. You guys can look it up. All right. Cool. Um, so you, the other thing that you, that comes to mind with you first was you having a large social media following, and then they just keep taking it away from you. So when I talk, when I have the conversations with other people about how you just do things that other girls do, but because you have curves, your shit gets taken down. Lindsay Payless and you were like two of the first girls that I think of when this whole thing's happen. First thing happens. First of all, um, how many have you lost account? Did you lose accounts before this, or like uh, like on MySpace or on Facebook? Or is I this never just lost a MySpace. My MySpace yeah. was always consistent. Um, when I first got on Instagram, I lost I want to say two accounts. Okay, and I even lost my Facebook once. And uh, they had a, a Facebook 
company party at yeah. Trist back yeah. in the day. And I was working it and I was like, hey, who can help me here get my Facebook back? Yeah. <laughs> Which one of y'all know how yeah. to help me? And so I got my Facebook back and then a month or two later, they took it down again. And it was for nothing that was even, I put an emoji like six months ago. I wrote someone a comment like, don't make me hurt you. And it put like a fist emoji. Yeah. Facebook took it down and said that I was threatening and that I violated community guidelines. Do you think there are people that are reporting you that like, like, do you ever have any obsessed fans that keep writing? Like there's guys who write me every time I have these girls on, I'm not going to say who they are. I don't answer their messages, but they write me these like 15 paragraph things about how women are bad and all this kind of shit. That's all the time. Yeah. You, so you get that kind of stuff all too. All the time. But like these like, guys are like, like they're autistic and they're just writing these long messages and I'm like not listening to them and they think, you know what I'm saying? We're all la we're laughing because it's true, right? Why do they gotta be autistic? Because they are, dude. When you meet them, they're are like, "Are you still gonna do the autistic bikini contest?" Huh? Oh my god. Okay, so you had an idea for an autistic bikini contest. That wasn't I'm, me. That was, obviously, I, think that was I, would Amber. I would never do that because you could. Can you imagine if I went up to some of these girls and I'm like, "Hey, listen, you're really pretty, and we just want to let you know if you, you want you to do our ASD bikini contest." No comment. <laughs> that would not go. No, but they have these meme. I felt I follow so many meme accounts. Yeah, Anyone me that too. follows me knows that my stories every day are mixed in with sexy pictures and a bunch of memes to make people laugh. Yeah, I follow so many meme accounts, and every single one of them on the daily have stories or posts of girls completely naked. Yeah, or in um, fishnet. Sure. So they can, you can see. And you can see everything. Like the sheer. nipple, the yeah. everything's protruding out of the fishnet, out of the holes, and it's completely transparent, but technically they're wearing something so they're not getting in trouble. Yeah. Meanwhile, I would post pictures of me like this, completely covering nipples, everything, and because it was skin touching skin and no top on or whatever my, my photo shoot was, and it was way before OnlyFans. It wasn't for OnlyFans. It was just like artistic, sexy photos. They would always get taken down and now it's gotten to the point where the memes being reported as suicidal or yeah. threatening or i've gotten a few times i posted memes about like relationship stuff and narcissism and it'll say fact check this is false information and then another one i got the last time that my account got taken away they took it away because i posted a meme of two spider-mans pointing at each other uh -huh. and one said flu and one said covid yeah and that meme got me taken down for a year on my main account because they said I was spreading false information about COVID. You know what's funny is that I posted one that said everyone who got the smallpox vaccine in 1687 is currently dead. Think about that. And obviously, it's, it was actually a pro-vaccine meme, and they suspended my account for it. Like, it, it was so incredibly stupid what they were doing. And the problem is this, right? Because they kept doing it, they just fueled the conspiracy, which made things worse. Yeah. If they just had let humor be humor, yeah. then it would have died People out. People would have taken it as It would have taken yeah. it as humor and died out. And that, But because they were so, they were trying so hard to stop these messages, which of course they couldn't, they just made the messages more powerful. They spread it more, yeah. Like w when you when you keep talking about there's a conspiracy against me and like, oh, there's no conspiracy. And then, uh, then Andrew Tate loses his Uber account, his Tinder account, his Instagram account, his Square account his Twitter account, his Facebook account, all at the same, like within an hour of each other. Oh, but there's no conspiracy? Of course. Like you make it look like a conspiracy when you do that. I'm not saying it was, I mean, obviously the, these heads of social media companies talk to each other. But like when I saw that, I was like, oh, you just proved it's a conspiracy. You Are there saying? actual humans working at, at Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, like so, actual humans? So, so here's the funny part. So I have a friend of mine who was working there and he keeps talking about them like repeatedly trying to turn over the work to algorithms and laying people off. So he got laid off. And then so when, when I try to file an appeal, an appeal. for something, yeah, it, it's taking longer and longer for me to get an appeal for anything. But at least you're getting someone, like I'm appealing stuff that is very obvious, like, hey, look at this meme about being in love yeah. and dating within someone's love language. Yeah. That's not a suicidal meme. Yeah. So so can someone, when I appeal this, can someone review this and come back to me yeah. like, oh, damn. But someone's still coming back to me like, we reviewed the content and we agree it goes again. Like, how? If you read it, you know that it's not suicidal, yeah. not porn, not a fake fact. Like, is there actual humans working there? Yeah, I don't think very many. I think they're, I think they're essentially going to get to the point where there aren't any. I mean, there's, some, there's simple solutions to this. Like, number one, what you do is you 
you send like what will happen every time you log on, you'll get a message from a prompt from them and they'll be like, does this photo in your estimation violate terms of service? And it'll be like a hot girl or whatever. And you just have a hundred thousand people vote yes or no. And like you do five or six of those a day and then you let the community determine whether or not terms of service is violated. If you did that, it would be fine. And it's a simple solution, but of course they will never do it. So anybody can hate you. Anybody can hate you yes. and just decide to report all your things. Yes. And it doesn't matter what you can do about it just because. Right. So, so Instagram enforces bullying. Instagram promotes when, when people bully you as an attractive woman, Instagram takes your account down, but they, they don't give you the benefit of the doubt. And in doing so they support bullying, but they don't see it that way because from their estimation, you don't have enough agency to decide to wear a bikini on your own. You're only doing so because of a patriarchy that forced you to do so. And so in their mind, they're doing what's best for you by taking your account down. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what they believe. If they didn't, then why would you would see other content creators who are outside the you know normal spectrum. I don't want you like to use normal, but like when you see, like I have, if you go on TikTok and you see somebody who makes content for homosexual men, they never get their account taken down, ever, ever, ever. Call me on that, call me on that. They, I see guys like rubbing them oil all over their body, hyper-sexualizing themselves. What no, is no, on your algorithm? No, no question whatsoever, no. So here's the funny, no, it's, it's a funny question. So there was a friend of mine and she started dating this dude and she was questioning whether or not he was She's like, uh, he comes to seem sus. I check his IG. He has a few followers. I check his Instagram or his TikTok and he's got like a million subs and it's very clear he's making, you know, content for homosexual men. And I'm like, uh, and I'm watching this and I'm like, wow, if this was Kindly Meyer, she would have got her shit taken down in five seconds. I can't believe this. You know what I'm saying? I also know another girl, never, she has like a fucking 1800 CC boob job and she's Asian, but she looks trans. She's not, she's actually just a woman, but because she looks trans, she's never had anything taken down. Nothing, not a single thing reported. It, it, it's it's crazy, man. It's like one of the one of the strangest. Th if I'm wrong, go prove that I'm wrong. I'm not. Like that's that's essentially what's going on. But I think what happens is also if you looked prepubescent, they wouldn't take your account down either. If you that's look so like scary. if you look like you haven't gone through puberty, TikTok has no problem promoting you and Daisy Dukes dancing around. But as soon as you have boobs and look like a woman that can breed and have children, done. You are. We're going to take you off the the platform. I've said this before. These social media companies hate women more than anyone. You, they. If you want to talk about misogyny, there is no one in the manosphere or red pill who hates women more than Instagram. Like Instagram is like, hey, you guys wanted to make a living using our platform. Thank you. You helped us grow our platform. Now fuck all of you. Now we're going to take away all of your accounts and anything that you state. And like it's one of these situations where it's like such incredible hypocrisy that that nobody wants to, to call them out on because i watch i like i'm not stupid enough i'm not so young to to forget what instagram used to be like and now what it's like now i mean don't you have to be 18 to have an instagram 13 i think did they change it because didn't it used to be 18 i don't think it was 18 it was they should just create a platform where it's 18 and up that way the whole like oh this is indecent this kind of photo is indecent not to say that you can post porn but just like not so much shit can be classified as community guidelines because now you're but going it, on this specific platform for this kind of content. No, it's it's not though. It's incels and like fundamentalist, like fundamental religious people who see your content and just report you. By the way, did you hear? What? Did you you follow Dan Fleischman? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that they're going to start charging for verification? On uh, on, on Twitter on Twitter. I don't know if they're going to do it on. Oh, on he was Instagram. talking about Instagram. Well, I know Elon is charging for verification on Twitter. Uh, if Instagram wants to charge for verification, I mean, that would probably be a better, more legitimate way than what they're doing now. He's, from what he was telling me yesterday, they want to start charging because there's all these black market verification companies mm -hmm. that will get you verified yeah. and they're making millions of dollars and Instagram's not seeing a dime of it. So now they want to start charging for it, which if you want to charge for the verifications that you already do for free, cool. But I would hope they still be vetted the same way. Yeah. Because if anybody can just pay a thousand dollars to get it verified, then it's just like being able to buy a Birkin at Walmart. Would you really want it? Would you really still spend sure fifty k or plus on a Birkin well, if you can get it at Walmart I, easily? I don't even care about being verified now. I don't care about like, it either. Like, like like now, I, we've gotten to the point now where I know so many forex traders and fucking scam artists that have blue check marks that I like. I don't want one. Yeah. Like I, I've seen people I, with 200 followers that have a blue yeah, check mark. Like, what does I, that do for you? If I was a celebrity, I would actually ask to like be unverified just to like go against the grain. Just be like, hey man, I, I'm not going to stand for like the shit that you're doing. How cool would it be if <laughs> that would be funny if it Rebel. was like, yeah, if like, like LeBron, I don't want your like, blue check mark. LeBron was like, take away my blue check mark. I don't want it anymore. Like, and then you know what I'm saying. But it was still LeBron. Um, so here's the other thing. So you've lost you lost several different accounts. You've you've gone through the transition of how things have changed. You see how these girls are like making so much money, and then the transition to OnlyFans that happened during COVID. 
uh, and how so many girls have done that. What's so interesting to me is how it's changed like the dating scene, how OnlyFans and Instagram have changed the dating scene to where it's one of these things where a woman can make a ton of money from not even being that cute. You've seen a lot of girls make a shit ton of money and they're not even that pretty. And then also on social media, having access to like unlimited high status men and then being confused by the the idea it's like, well, because this power forward, this NBA power forward got in my DMs, therefore I'm going to be in a relationship with them. Have you seen this? You understand what I'm talking about? I've seen like a TikTok where this girl says, I make a million dollars a month by doing my spicy website. Yeah. And she's, um, I feel bad saying this, in my opinion, not remotely attractive. Attra- in my opinion, yeah. not my taste. And the comments, if you look, her all those videos that she posts on TikTok go viral. Yeah. And I, every single comment's the same. It was like, yeah, right. Who's paying to see your stuff? She lives, I think, in like Alaska, and yeah. she lives in an igloo. Yeah. So I think her content is her doing either softcore or hardcore porn inside of in ice igloo? igloos. Okay. No, so I, that might. I will be, subscribe to that. I will. Go maybe ahead that might that. be her like niche or whatever that she's yeah. doing, but like nobody really truly believes that she's making that much money off of it. And there's so many girls that I'm just kind of like, they make 200K a month. Yeah. And they have no boobs, no butt, no curves. Yeah. They look like they're living in a trailer park down the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How? I don't understand. I don't. But I, I mean, want to know who's paying. Like, I want someone to like DM me and be like, hey, this is why I pay for that. I want to know why. I want answers. Well, the, the answer is someone is paying. Like yeah. That part is verifiable because of the our revenue that that OnlyFans is reporting. We know that that part is. But the thing is, it's what is it? What is it? It's a symptom of, of exceptionally lonely men who have been created because of a society due to smartphones, social media apps on smartphones, and then the like asymmetry of the way men are treated by women, um, specifically because of social media. When I say asymmetry, I mean like women who are all chasing after the same top 20% of men and then the bottom 33% of men they don't even see. Like, like uh, you know, you see a cute guy at the, at the mall and you, re- you remember it, you see like a five foot four, you know, Hispanic guy who's your cashier at Walmart. And the, it's not that women think he's unattractive, they just don't even see him. They don't even notice he's there. Like I had Jamie Villamore on here and was like, yeah, I think the average guy in the United States is like six two. And I'm like, no, it's not. That's less than 9% of the population <laughs> is that tall. It's so crazy when you see that. Like, so a lot of times where women will do that, they'll like they have this belief that because they're getting so much attention on social media, that they're going to be able to then turn that into a relationship, and it just doesn't work out that way. A relationship. A relationship. Like dating. Yes, I know girls who go on social media. They get a ton of in, uh, of engagement on social media. Then they'll date a guy, and the guy does not hold up to the standards of the guy with the yacht in Monaco. And then they're like, because you don't hold up to these standards, I want more. I want more. I want better. Okay. Do you, do you not see that, Jesse? I use social media differently. I yeah. think I think that's the difference. Is that I don't like I post on my on my story all the time. I don't date people based off of social media. Yeah, that's good. Like, don't hit me up at in my DMs. You're not going to get a date that way. Right. But, like when I was single. But other girls. You don't you don't see it. I don't know what other girls yeah. are doing. I do know that they get. 200 likes on a photo and all of a sudden they think that they should be red carpeted everywhere. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the dating scene, I would never date somebody off of social media. Yeah. I would prefer either you have no social media whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You're completely just out of that, that world or you have social media and you use it for like a business. Mm-hmm. But if you're the kind of guy that follows a bunch of girls, like I'm not even going to look twice at you, mm. even though I'm one of the girls that I'm expecting to be followed by dudes. Yeah. I'm one of those half naked girls that girls hate your man following, but I still would not date that guy. Interesting. That is, that is interesting. Double sided sword sword there. Uh, can you talk about this point? Um, full tilt poker. Were you invo- involved with them? When it was not, not full. Po- uh, yeah. Victory poker. Victory poker. Sorry. Did, were you involved with them? I was when I first moved to Vegas. It was the very first thing that I did. Was it was it Dan Fleischman, Dan Blazarian. It was, um, Sarah Jessica, Underwood, Sarah Underwood, Jessica Barciaga, uh, Natalie Marie, me, and uh, Jessa Hinton. Jessa Hinton was mm-hmm. was Anna Cherie. Was she part of that? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. What was that like? What was that whole thing? Because that that actually started a lot of. Remember, this is. I think that started before Instagram, and a lot of those people became huge influencers. Yeah. It was. It was a. <laughs> it, it was fun. It also is kind of the starting point of I think 
the relationship that his book was kind of sort of around. What were you talking with, about him and Jessa? Mm -hmm. So Jessa, yeah, Je if you guys read uh, the setup by Dan Bilzerian, Jessa has a pretty big role in the first third of the book. Um, he, cause Dan lives in Panorama Towers and he has a player, like he, he, he falls in love with Jessa. I mean, he says he's in love with her at one point and they just go back and forth. And then what ends up breaking up the relationship? Did you read that part? I didn't read the book. I wanted nothing to do with it. Okay. Well, <laughs> the reason why they break up is because at one point she, he, she keeps talking about some, um, artist that she's a, a fan of. He doesn't say who the artist is, some singer. It could, it could be anybody. Just think about somebody in the early 2010s that was famous and male and good looking or whatever. It could have been Bruno Mars. I don't fucking know. Anyway, so she's like, oh, I think he's really cute. And then she sends a photo of her kissing this celebrity on the cheek to Dan. It, this is all in the book. And then Dan is done with her after that. And that's when he breaks up. And then that's like, there's like big changes that happen after that. But there, he Dan goes into very specifically... The girls that he fell for, Lauren Blake, Sophia Beverly, Jessa Hinton. He's very, in fact, I don't even know if he uses their last name in the book. He just, but he calls them by their first name. And he's very specific about it. But the Jessa Hinton thing I thought was interesting. I didn't know Jess at all. I've met her twice in my life. And I know she was like a big deal. And then she ends up dating Dan. And then afterwards ends up dating the guy who is now married to Britney Spears, uh, Sam Ascari. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. And then leaves Sam Ascari and then is completely into women now. She's like. She's always been into women. Okay. Even after, even when I, when I first moved out here, she was telling me about how she had been dating some girl and they dated for a hot minute. Yeah. I want to say right after Sam, was it after Sam or before Sam? I think there was a gap between Dan and Sam. Yeah. And she was dating a girl and she was full, like for a whole, at least a year they yeah. were together. And they, I think they lived together and everything. She's always been into girls. Yeah. But, um, those days were no the 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 opening for it, intrigue. It was a video of her and Sam getting out of an elevator. Do you remember this? Mm -mm. This is before Sam married Britney Spears afterwards, which of course like still is mind blowing to me. I just like this male model that I used to interview on the fucking red carpets at Fleischman's events is like married to Britney Spears. It's just crazy to me. So random. Yeah, it's just super random, man. But yeah, I mean, those were. Uh, do, do you remember anything like when you first moved here? What were those? What were those times like? I didn't have a job yet because I moved out here without a job. Yeah. But I ended up, um, I forget how it is that I even got hooked up with Fleischman and uh, Lazarian, but they asked me to come do the modeling stuff for the, the company because they were doing the Victory Procore stuff. Mm -hmm. And also we were doing stuff on the Speedway. So we did videos of us okay. like racing cars. We did a helicopter thing. We would always go, like there was like at least five or six parties that we went to at Lazarian's penthouse in the panorama mm -hmm. he had a chef <laughs> i remember going into his bedroom and he's like look at this really cool thing and he put he like held up a, a bulletproof vest uh -huh. and he made someone wear it and then shot them <laughs> at the party <laughs> at the party in his house i was like okay uh um, wait he shot someone with a bulletproof vest on at his, at his house Wait, what? It's okay. All right. That's great. At Panorama Towers? At Panorama Towers. I'm not sure if that violates uh, I was like, the uh, HOA or not. I'm not sure if that really happened. Um, that's crazy. No, what's crazy to me is that, I don't know, I forgot what floor it's on, but like he, there's a story where there's a girl, he calls her Michelle, throws a phone off the balcony and it survives. And I don't know how that's possible, but yeah, it's one of the craziest Threw things. it into where? He threw it out the balcony and I think it landed either like down by the pool deck. Or I don't remember. I don't know which side of the the building his his apartment was on or it, it or bulzarian's uh, balcony was on the side with a parking lot and it landed in one of those like the you know there's like trees there's these little houses down on the fourth floor uh, these apartments on the fourth floor and they have a backyard and there's trees there maybe the so maybe it hit like something soft i'm just saying like even if he's on 30 like that's 26 foot, so it's 260 feet that or 250 if it lands flat there's no 13th floor so 230 250 feet yeah maybe i don't know that's crazy yeah it was, it was i've never i forgot to ask him that sort of always but those were crazy him. days for sure those were crazy days Okay, can we talk about this um, uh, hot girl history? Okay, mm. hot girl history, which is the concept of before 2000, if a girl was pretty, she had to go out and show that she was pretty. She had to go somewhere there was because there was no social, no media. social media. And then bottle service happens. So three things happened in 2004: HDTV, text messaging. We already had cell phones. People were like normal people had cell phones back in 98, 99. Uh, Bottle like text messaging was already in Europe, but it wasn't big in the United States until 2004. A lot of people think text messaging was like with the original cell phones, but it wasn't. We didn't get into texting until 04. And then the third one was um, uh, bottle service. Bottle service started around 03, 04. Do you know the first place that had it in the U.S.? 
Vegas? Yeah, no, it was Marquee Nightclub in in the Meatpacking District. It was opened by oh. Jason Strauss in two thousand and three. Hmm. You should read. You should read a book called uh, "Very Important People" by Ashley Mir. She goes into that. That's yeah. where the whole bottle service thing happened. That marquee closed down and then reopens as marquee like redevelops itself. But Jason, I was tech- talking to him the other day. He was a promoter, like passing out flyers a long time yeah. ago before he, it's really crazy when you think about that. And then he became, he got involved in, in nightlife as in, in the management. Now he's probably the most popular. He is, I think, you know, I know in Grubman is really important in Miami, but I think across the entire planet, I think Jason would be number one because of all the Omnias and all the Hakkasans and all the marquees on the planet uh, that he that he is in charge of. I think he's probably the most powerful man in nightlife on the planet now at this point. And you saw the MGM sphere that's opening up behind. Yeah. That thing is incredible. Yeah. I can't it's wait huge. to go, go to watch a show in there. That thing is crazy. But uh, back then, uh, so in 04, all those things change. And then from what happens after that is like 05, then MySpace comes out. And now this is the first time where we can all see Tila Tequila. We can all see Jesse Preston. You start having Sweet, like- uh, What was her name? Forbidden. Forbidden. What was for her sure. name? That she died? Oh, I, I know who you're talking about, but yeah, yeah I can't yeah. remember her name. Uh, and then do Tom is creeping in girls' DMs too. Like I know a bunch of girls, Tom from MySpace, Tom yeah. Anderson, he was like creeping in their DMs to like try to talk to them. And then like that happens like 05 and then uh, that blows up. And then my, then Facebook comes out in like 2010 and then 2012 or 2011, 2012, MySpace comes out. And I think it's 2014 when Facebook buys MySpace and then the, the terms of service change. But what happens with girls is like they go from this point where the prettiest girls were stripping or they were going to nightclubs or they were working. You remember Hooters used to have pretty girls? They don't anymore, but Hooters used to have like stunning women. All these things used to happen. And then as we got into the social media age, girls like would stay at home and then dudes would not be able to get access or see these girls when they were out. Yeah. And you just saw this transition where men were literally like being educated by their smartphones. <laughs> and then what happens- Learning how to be men. Correct. Then what happens in 08 is we get the Facebook app on the, on the iPhone. The iPhone comes out in 07. And then f- from that point forward, you start seeing this incredibly, incredible increase in the number of men with zero sexual partners. It just like flies up from 18% to 33% in like a decade, a little longer than a decade. And it's just one of these crazy things that's happened throughout this, this what you look confused. Because I would think it'd be the other way around. No, it made it easier for guys who were good with women to get more women. And it made weirdos, like it put them even further behind. Because it's it like stunted their growth, no. their their social skills. No, so so just I want you to think about it from from your woman's and you you're on social media and you're getting a lot of attention from a lot of different places, right? Okay. The guys who don't have a, a a social media profile of things to show, they don't even exist to you. They don't even look bad. They just don't even exist. And you probably have weirdos messaging you, and you're like, they aren't even weirdos. They just look like normal guys. They're just not not a ton of attention. Not you, Jesse Preston, just average social media girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and what happens is when the celebrities message you, you notice them even more. So like a good looking guy or a guy, let's say a guy with a nice car back in 90, 1995, he could show off his nice car, but he would only the people who were around who could see it would know right. that he had a nice car. But now on social media, now he gets to show that off to everyone. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. And so what, what you have is just imagine like, here's all the men and all the women, the hot, like all the women want the top 20% of men. Whereas the men are willing to date like whatever woman that they can get. So the way it generally works with the hypergamy uh, uh, pyramids is women will date their level or higher and men will date their level or lower. And so when you do the math, what you find is like a lot of women, here's the other part. You remember the the study I told you about where 33% of men were having zero sexual partners. Mm -hmm. Women were reporting the same number of sexual partners. So think about that. If women were reporting the same amount of sex and 33% of men are having zero sex, what does that mean about the top 20% of men? Are these numbers like... The, Something that someone's just saying? No, the survey. There's a U.S. Census Bureau. Right, but how do you how do you actually know that they're only having sex with one per, partner that entire year? Okay, well, instead let, of saying that so, it was one, but it was really thirty five. One to thirty five is a bit of a stretch. Like it's it's, it's statistically unviable that a lot of people were saying I have, I'm having zero sexual partners and they had thirty five. You might get that like one out of a hundred people. That's not going to be super common. But how many dudes do you in know? In women, it probably would be. For sure. But how many? How, well, women were actually reported having more sex. They went from like uh, uh. 12 to like 16% of women. Uh, my, my question to you is, um, you, do you know any dudes who have been with more than 200 women? <laughs> Stop looking. That's fucked up. <laughs> um, um, yes. It's, it's possible, right? Yes. Here, okay. It's more... more 
common than so so my point is before social media you had a normal distribution where you had guys that would like sleep with like four or five girls and then guys would sleep with like 30 or 40 and what you're having now is a huge swath of men who are at zero and a huge swath of men that are 700 do you understand yeah do you remember like what walmart did to dating what, what walmart did to like these mom and pop places everyone went to walmart and they closed everybody else down yeah that's what social media has done to dating there's a few group of there's a small group of men who are getting all the attention Eight, so six, how does a, how does a man come out of that? You got to you have to pay attention to the the profile that you put out on social media. So let's say you, have to you live in mom's basement. Uh huh. You don't have money. Okay. How do you come out of that and start making a profile that appears like your life is better than what it is? And then the minute you meet somebody, you show that that's not really your life. It's great. Someone ought to teach a program about this. Jesse, that's such a what a fucking crazy idea. I think I've seen it online. Yeah, you've seen like it before. Men of uh, action or something yes. like that. All right. So the first thing you should do is how many jobs are there that you can get that make a lot of money where you can live in your mom's basement? Copywriting, high ticket sales. There's a ton of them. You can learn coding. There's all these ways to get out of your mom's basement where you can make eighty to one hundred fifty k a year. There are no fucking excuse. You can learn Python for free right now. There's no, there's so much free information for you to learn that. So what happens is let's just get to the point where we're making 70, 75,000 and let's do that for a couple years. Then let's move to a place that's a relevant place. And if we need to get a roommate, let's get a roommate, but it's better to get a roommate at a cool penthouse near the strip than it is to get to all, live by yourself, to in live some by dingy, some, some dingy yeah. place way the fuck out of nowhere. So yeah. that's step number two. So now we've got that just a little bit built up. Now let's go off and show us going to cool places. Cause here's the thing for guys one of the things is we, when women look at our profiles they look at what we can do and what more than, than like our facial feature like if you see one picture of a guy and he looks physically attractive that's kind of all you need to see you don't need to see a bunch of photos of that but if you see he's in paris this week and he's in dubai this week and then the next week he's in tokyo and the next week he's in london in your mind you're thinking oh this guy has means to travel and he's a hoe mm. okay he's a hoe and that's turned you off before a hundred percent yeah you were married to a porn star and it turned you off. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse Preston. Thank you. I'd like to strike the previous message from the record, Your Honor. Stop telling me that you give a shit if a dude's a hoe. It's ridiculous. I I'm, do. I'm not even asking you this question. You don't. You don't care. I think you care, but it wouldn't make you stop dating them. 100% it would. If they weren't a hoe when they were with you. If they were previously a hoe? Yeah. It, it's, it confirms the same exact thing to me. I said to you in the last time that I was here. Yeah. It means that you don't have respect for your body. It means that you. I it, think that men who have sex with lots of women does not determine whether or not they have respect for their body just it, because they had a lot of to sex. To me, with a lot of it does because you, I am on a more spiritual end of it. I believe that every person that you have sex with, you exchange a spiritual part of your energy with. Yes. On top of yes, the I, physical, I, yeah, yes, I read the that. Physical yeah, stuff. I, I read that paper. No. no, no, I do not. <laughs> okay, I do not think that guys should get a, a free pass because they're men and, and built to spread their seed. No, no, I don't think they should get a free pass at all. What I'm telling you though is that it does not affect their psychology. So let's talk about another study. This one I haven't mentioned this one before on the call or on the show, but there's a study that shows the number of sexual partners that men and women have before they get married and how it affects their marriage. It has to do with the amount of women. people. So basically, people get married, and then 10 years later, they do a survey on them. Are you very happy or not very happy in your marriage? Does that make sense? Yeah. People who got married as virgins, they report very happy. 71 or 75% for men, 65% for women. After one, two, three, four partners, it drops for both of them. Once you get to 10, women plummet. Men go up. Men are actually happier in marriages once they get to like 11, 12, 13 partners. When Because they've done it all. They've yes. experienced it. Yeah, but they're happier in their marriage. But 10 or 11 partners yeah. is different than 200 right. plus partners. But, but once you get above 20, it actually, the, like the numbers go up. They, they, the study only went to 20. Um, for women, once they get above... Once they get below 10, they get below 50% as far as how... Now, to be fair, like the ha the highest point was for women was 65% and the lowest point was 52%. At no point did it go below 50%. Most women were still happy in their marriage after 10 years. But the thing is, it, just, it did show. Now, here's the other crazy part. If you've had more than 20 sexual partners, it's like a 17% chance that you'll stay in your marriage and not get divorced. Remember, on, on balance, the whole population has a 53% divorce rate. On balance, 70% divorces are initiated by women. And when men are divorced by their wife, they're nine times as likely to commit suicide. These are real. You want to talk about real problems, Jesse? These are like real problems. You want to talk about like real actual. So the bigger the hoe, the happier long term. No, it's not. Marriage. It's not. It's not happier. It's that it's happier or not happier. When men have lots of sexual partners, it does not affect their relationship. 
Sorry, get as mad at me as you want. Quote the Bible to me all you want. The reality is the reality. When if, man, if a man had 200 sexual partners, he's not more likely or less likely to cheat on his wife. He isn't. It's not, it's no. Let me put a caveat. If you're at zero, yes. He is more likely than a guy who got married as a virgin to cheat. Yes, that is correct. But what causes men to cheat is actually has more to do with their options and less to do with their previous sexual partners. What causes women to cheat has to Happiness. do with their sex. No, it has to do with their previous sexual partners. It does. It's uh, see, you're rolling your eyes at me. But this, this is not my opinion. This is just what studies will show. You can look up as a GSS survey. I'll send it to you if you want to look, look at it. No, it's Center for Family Studies. That's the one that uh, the Institute of Family Studies did that survey. But that's the one that happened. And and it's just one of these situations where we're different. I'm not saying men should get a free pass. What I'm telling you is that if you go off and fuck some other dude. It has more likely, on balance, a greater likelihood of it affecting your relationship than if he 100%. goes. Then if a dude goes off and fucks some other girl, it had, it could most likely have zero effect on your relationship. See again, you're you're, you're looking at me like I'm crazy, no, but you no, know no, no, deep no. down this it's, is true. It's 100 true. Yeah, it's not right though. I agree that it's, but whether or not it's right. The I don't last know. time that we were here and we were talking about sex. Every single one of the live comments were all mm -hmm. oh, these whores and these. Yeah, don't don't pay attention to them. Those but are, it, that's the, exactly what it is, though. Those are YouTube commenters, though. But that's exactly what it truly is. If I were to tell you my number mm -hmm. was above a hundred, mm -hmm. not you, because mm -hmm. you're smart enough to know different. Yeah. But most people would be like, "Oh my God, she's a whore." Now, if I were to tell you my number was five, you'd be like, "Oh, she's a good girl." But what if those five people? were disgusting sure. home like random people like, on the street then those five people i would be judged for yeah. it. it's like everything that a woman does she's going to be judged for it's going to be held against her. i don't disagree but a guy can be a whore a guy can do he can have sex with 800 girls in a month not use a condom one single time and he's still okay he's still cool he's still cool i think that would be a little weird 800 in a month that would probably listen, be some lower back problems at some point listen i know someone who could pull it off I've known people who can pull it off. Yeah. But that guy doesn't have to use a condom and he he's still cool. No one's judging Whenever him. Whenever you it. have to complain about men, you just keep looking at your boyfriend over no. here. And I just think this is a little bit unfair <laughs> that you keep doing this. Over he, I mean, he's so good looking. Yeah. It's the pussy's being thrown at him 24 yeah. 7, right? So I, on the other hand, I'm sitting here trying to establish like, I would like a humble conservative, normal relationship that has threesomes once in a while. But all of these things that are just kind of traditional yeah. for the most part. And everyone looks at me like because I do OF or because I, I must be a whore. No, actually, so you're not... No, I, I agree with you, but that's not why they're saying that. They're saying that because you're pretty and you have curves. It's not because you do OF. Like, do you understand? What is the problem with having a curve? No, 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 I don't understand. You, we're, we're having two different conversations. What I believe and what the world believes are two different things. What One of the reasons why a lot of girls just went ahead, like the Caitlin Runks and the Lindsay Palaces, eventually broke down and did OnlyFans is because people thought they were whores anyway. Do you understand? Caitlin Runk has never shown nudity on anything she's ever done. But because she, because people already have this perceived feeling, it, yeah. they already perceive this about her, she's like, then I might as well fucking do it anyway. Same thing with Lindsay Palace. She's like, Lindsay Palace, she talked about one time going into Mastro's and they made her put a top, like a second jacket on because her boobs were too big. Wait, what? Like literally, I would file a class action lawsuit against them. For they, they did that to me going on an airplane, going so, to Seattle. So you understand my, my point. So the problem is you're sitting there, you're saying it's because you were in Playboy and it's because you are on OnlyFans. 99% of people you encounter never get to know that you were on OnlyFans or in Playboy. What they do get to see though is what you look like and what you look like to some men because they will never possess you. Their response is hatred. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's more. That's actually more where it comes from it like if you weren't attractive and didn't have curves and weren't appealing to men then they wouldn't be doing this see what i'm saying in what world does that make sense it, it's nothing to make sense it, well it makes sense when you realize these men are hopeless let's go back to the original <laughs> thing these yeah but these 33 percent of men they'll never possess you yeah so what's the so response they res they're resentful there you go yeah. okay no but also your existence and your lack of acknowledgement of them to them is rejection so how, what, what do they do to protect themselves from a rejection Jesus christ what a life what do they do to protect themselves from your rejection? What do they do? 304s. That's they, what that hoe upside down is 304. That's what it's called, 304. Um, so they call it 304s. They call them hoes. They call them all these different names. Why do they do that? Because they're protect, they're pro 
protecting themselves from the rejection that they get from you not acknowledging their existence. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you also remind them of other women that are attractive in their life that don't acknowledge their existence. So they protect themselves. It's really funny because I did rule zero here the other day. And it was funny because I was worried that sitting here with a bunch of Manosphere guys that they were all going to hate women. And every one of them agreed with me. They're like, these women who are showing their bodies off on social media, it's fine. I don't give a fuck. It's great. These women are hot. You know what I love is having my girlfriend sitting on my lap in a hot tub and having fucking beautiful women shaking their ass all over the place. None of it bothers me. I don't look at them and be like, when, where's your father figure? I don't ever feel that way. I'm like, this is fun. Express yourself. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Right. But these guys are like, no, because why? Because they don't get to participate. They don't get to come to the party. It's like, it's the person who hates on the club or hates on the guy in the VIP and you can't even get in. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why they, they act like that towards you. It's not because you did Playboy. Now, later on, once they, they look at, oh, she did Playboy, therefore she's a hoe. She's, they're just looking for evidence to just, for the justification of their original belief. Yeah. Does that make sense? You're pretty and don't acknowledge them. Therefore, I need some sort of way to fight back. That's what's going on. So an actress in Hollywood who does a topless scene or mm -hmm. a sex scene, yeah. and she's nude, but as opposed to an OnlyFans model who does topless pictures. I think, I think you're conflating what Hollywood thinks. So Hollywood gives you credibility for being in Hollywood movies. But no, people, if you were to ask people, do they think so-and-so who did a nude scene like Margot Robbie or whoever is a hoe, is they'd, still, a hoe? they'd still call her a hoe, yeah. You'd think they would call her a hoe? I feel would. like they would be like, no, but, 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 Let's just say this. Rob, Margot Robbie's not a hoe, or at least I don't know the terror to be one. My, my point is these same men would call her that, 100%. Yeah, of course. Because Margot Robbie doesn't acknowledge them either. Does mm. it make any sense? It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. I feel like it gives them a pass. I feel like everyone picks and chooses <sighs> when some things are okay. Mia Khalifa, let's, let's talk about the opposite. Mia Khalifa started making comments about men who date younger women are missing something inside. And of course, my response was, yeah, they're missing younger women. That's what they're missing. But here's, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Never gets old. So the, uh, the, the, the thing is, Mia Khalifa, why is Mia Khalifa saying that? Because who's she getting rejected by? Younger men? No, Mia Khalifa, the men that Mia Khalifa tries to date now, I'm just, I'm making, okay, I'm not going to say this about Mia Khalifa. I'm going to say in general, this is a, a hypothesis. This is this, a narrative I've seen before. A woman does adult porn, that she does porn, she does adult films, and then later on wants to have a normal relationship with a normal guy. But the, in, well, So she starts dating him. And of course, he'll have sexual intercourse because it's his favorite porn star. And in her mind, she's getting ready for a long-term relationship. And, and he's just his, fulfilling a fantasy. In his mind, he's fulfilling a fantasy and fucking his favorite porn star. I think that's happened to her several times. I think that's happened to Lana Rhodes several times. And because the two of them keep experiencing this, their response is, men are shit. When are they going to step up? Porn should be illegal. And dating younger women it should be illegal. Do you understand? Yeah. They're talking their book. Just like men who are getting rejected by women who look like you call you a hoe, women who are getting rejected by men who don't take them seriously are calling these men pieces of shit and immature. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The term is called talking your book or cognitive bias. I know that I'm by, like, I understand that rational people want to go to Texas A&M University. It doesn't make any fucking, like, I can't believe it, but they do. Obviously, the, the, the universe, I, I'm a Longhorn, so I think, no, everyone should be a fucking Texas Longhorn fan. I can't believe people are actually Philadelphia Eagle fans. It's crazy to me as a Cowboys fan, but they are. I understand my bias because I grew up in Dallas. Do you understand? Yeah. I also know my bias thinking like I like to be around pretty girls because they're very attractive to me. I understand my bias. Some people have bias and don't believe they have a bias. Do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So a lot of times as a woman gets older, she'll be like, why don't these men pay attention to me like they did when I was 23? It's because these men are immature. And I'm like, well, you didn't think that when you were 23, you yeah. were just fine with this when you were 23. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a, that's where, you know, Rollo talks about an epiphany stage in his book, The Rational Male, is there's this point where women, like when they turn 28, 29, and they've been with a couple of guys, they want to get right with God and find a partner. That's where that essentially happens. That didn't happen for you because you were married during that point. Yeah. You were with one dude for 10 years. Yeah. Right. So that's essentially what happened. Sorry, we got way off topic, but I love that. I like I like the discussion. Anytime, any kind of intersexual dynamics discussion with you, I like having with it. I just, I'm sometimes the wrong person for you to have those conversations with because I'm so far on the other side. Well, you're so far on the other side because you're not, in, like a dude can't, so again, watch. As soon as I say this, guys are going to get mad at me and be like, no, that's bullshit. You guys can't impress, my, guys can't money whip you into a date. Right. You're, are you engaged now or are you married now? Married. You're married. Did you guys got married? How come you didn't fucking tell me anything? <laughs> Can you show the ring? We'll talk you married one of my friends and you didn't even fucking tell me? Like, I like to point that out real quick, how fucking cool that is. Thank you, Jesse Preston. This is ridiculous. I can't. Okay, so. so uh, in, Height does not impress me. Money does not impress me. Material things do not impress me. 
any of the, the the guy with the with the higher sex count because he's better and better yeah. that doesn't okay that's so, not so, what so i want to point out you're saying this and as soon as you say this people are going to put the little cap the little cap thing the right. emoji in there to say that you're lying right. and i know you're we're not going to dox your husband but i know your husband and you're telling the truth yeah. i can say unequivocally you're telling the truth and that will make dudes mad they'll be like no 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 that's true and i know i've known you you know for 10 years now 12 years and you it's true you've never i've never seen you run off with some dude because he's rich my first husband had no job yeah and we dated for six months and i paid for everything everything he had to go clean houses with his mom yeah and she would throw him 20 bucks out of the money that she was making so that he could afford to go to the movies with me and do stuff with me without me always having to pay for it but he had zero job and then he proposed to me on our six month anniversary and i said yes and we got married mm. and he's still no job for a hot minute yeah and even throughout the 11 years that we were together i made six figures he did not yeah it was never about money it was never about anything else except for the connection that i had with him yeah and that's i mean people can cap and say that i'm lying all they want but i'm not driven by those I mean, things like most women yeah for sure I, I would agree with you that most women are driven by needing the higher status and all this, but that's not, I'm the wrong person to talk about with certain things because yeah. of that. No, but that, that's why I like talking to you about it. I think it's interesting. I'm on the other spectrum. Well, you're also like aggressively pursue women, which I also think is a very interesting thing to talk to you about. Girls are pretty. Okay. You had a husband, your previous husband was not cool with you being with other women. Mm -mm. You can go into that. He, he, remember I said to you last time. I off, I asked him, what would you think about if we ever had a threesome? And he started to fucking cry. Like really? full on, like, why do you want to share me? Oh my God. But after seeing that that wasn't the um, the route to take with him, and not to mention that he, <laughs> uh, sexually, he wouldn't have been able to handle it. Let's just say that. Okay. He was not in the bedroom. He would have just embarrassed me is what would have happened. Really? So it was better that we didn't do that. But- I've always been bisexual. I've always known that I liked women. Mm -hmm. And then the boyfriend after him just was like narcissistic, abusive, crazy, would have thought of it as cheating just as much as I, if I would have had sex with a, a guy. Really? Yeah. For him, like anything was a threat. That napkin on the floor over there, I was looking at it too hard. It must have been because some dude that was really, really hot used it. And now I'm fantasizing about him. That's why I'm looking at that napkin. Like everything was a threat. So that wouldn't have been anything that I could do with that situation. And now my situation is I am allowed and I'm free enough and I'm not judged and I'm comfortable enough where that my partner is okay with me doing those things and we can enjoy that together. Yeah. Most guys would be uh, okay with you doing those things. Being really? okay with it and being able to handle it are two different things. I'm going to tell you this right now. Not every guy can say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do the threesome. Walk in the room and be able to please both women. Cause most guys, G -g -g -g, and then the, that would be it. <laughs> that would be it. And they'd be like, oh, shit. I didn't know what you were saying. Now I understand what you're saying. Not yeah. everyone would be able yeah, to handle for sure. it. Yeah, Yeah. So the fantasy might be there. And of course, guys are going to be like, yeah, but then you're going to embarrass the both of us. And that is one thing I will not tolerate. So so I have a question for you. So I know a lot of women who are bisexual that get into relationships and are afraid to have threesomes because they think they're going to get replaced or they see the other women, they're jealous of the other woman. How do you compartmentalize that? Yeah, you, you, Have you seen girls before? It's like... They're either a unicorn, so they go into with another couple, or it's a situation where they had a threesome when they were fucked up on Molly, and like it didn't mean anything because the guy wasn't their guy, yeah. so they didn't have a problem with it. So they enjoyed the threesomes. Then when they get into a relationship, they don't want to do it with their man, even though they were comfortable with doing doing it, it when they were single. So yeah, you, you are they aware of what invested. I'm talking about. Yes. Can you talk to me everyone? About said that to me when I had talked about this with my first husband. Everyone's like, you you think that a threesome would be fun because it sounds fun, but you should only do it with someone you're not invested in, someone we, you're not actually can we, dating. Can we get a group shot? It is fun. Put your thumbs up. <laughs> it is fun. Let me tell you right now, it is fun. I'll, I'll let 10 you know. 10 out of 10 hey, recommend. What, let, two thumbs up. Would recommend. I'll let you know when I get tired. I'm 45. I'll let you know when it's I get tired. It's only of fun if the people in it are actually bisexual. Yes. Because if you get a drunk well, girl no, and tell her like, I'll, hey, we're going to hook up with this girl tonight. And she's like, uh, and she does the whole and pretends like she's eating you out or pretends like she's hooking up and she's not really. And you're just sitting there watching two people hook up and taking turns. That's not really a threesome. Yeah. And that's not as fun. And do me if I, like hold on, zoom in real close. Okay. Shower. Shower. <laughs> if you're about to have a threesome. Clean yourselves. Everybody in the party, everyone participating, soap. Have a, I, I would have a shower before the threesome. Have you ever done that? 
We all have a threesome yeah, shower, yeah, yeah. and then everyone's yeah, that's foreplay. Everyone's needs to that's make foreplay, sure but sometimes the, it doesn't work out that all way. All their all your furry places or ball places, whatever, need to be clean. Hardwood floors, yes, yes, for sure, they need to be clean. Like you could eat all them, or you know. But no, I don't navigate through threesomes with the mentality of being replaced. I and this is a newfound yeah. epiphany of mine. If my relationship with so and so, with so and so, with so and so, with so and so, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out. I'm okay. That was for me a big thing. I spent my whole oh, you're life. Oh, sa- you're saying if you have a threesome with a dude and because the dude had a problem afterwards and left with the other girl, you're fine with that. I'm okay. Yes. Okay. If my relationship, threesome or not, yeah. doesn't work out for mm-hmm. whatever the reason is, I'm okay. Yes. That makes sense. That's, that's, so, that's a good attitude. Yeah. But always having this like thing, like what happens if we break up? What happens if this, what if I go here with him and what if he meets so-and-so or what, what if he goes out with his boys and then he cheats? Listen, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Yeah. If it's, if he's capable of doing that to you, whether you're around, not around, whatever, you have to be okay with, if something doesn't work out, yeah. you being single. Last Thursday, Brandy Andrews was in here and she was talking about the, the times that she had had threesomes. And afterward, after she'd have a threesome, she'd like break up with the dude because she wasn't attracted to him anymore. And I was thinking from my standpoint, it's like, well, at least I know now. I wouldn't be that mad. I'd be like, well, at least I know now. You know what I'm saying? Like She would get mad after doing it? She would lose attraction for the guy after she had a threesome with him. And I'm like, well, you know, if I did that and the girl lost attraction for me, at least we know, you know? That sounds like, like a trap, does it not? I mean, it's a trap, but I mean... It's like if I meet a girl and she's the girl of my dreams, but she hates cats. Sorry, I, I'm you're not. I'm not getting rid of my cats. So is she warning them like, hey, this is what's going to happen? No, she said, but she's done it twice, and in the two times it's happened, she's completely lost an interest in the guy afterward. So what she's looking for is for a guy to be like, no, 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 no. I just want you. I don't that would I, make her feel I, better. I don't think it matters one way or the other. Like I think for her, when she's had a threesome, because she's you know she finds women attractive, that in the two times that she's, I think she said two, it may be more than two. Uh, that after the the morning after she's no longer attracted to the guy. That, that I feel like that would only happen to me if I witnessed him do something that we had already pre discussed. Like there's yeah, certain yeah, things yeah, that you're yeah. just not okay and, with. And every threesome arrangement I've had, we've had rules set where like you're gonna do this with the, this girl, but I'm the main girl and you only do these things with me. And every one of them it's been like that. Yeah. I think I have what, two rules? Don't cream pie her. <laughs> Don't cream pie her. Oh, don't talk outside of the threesome. Like if, if this is something that we're doing with someone we know, yeah. cool. But if this is like a random that we picked up up one night, there should be no communication with you guys after the threesome. It, she was a random. She it, was a throwaway is what it, we call it. It's them. really interesting in my situation because a lot of the girls that we'd bring home in my previous relationship were girls that I've been friends, that you're with, friends for, with for like 10 years. And that's happened for us multiple times yeah. as well. I think every threesome that we've had has been someone that we are friends with. Yeah. And that's just part of our circle. But if we have the random throwaway girls, there's no, she's a throwaway. So there's no reason to exchange phone numbers. There's no reason it's, to it's exchange so, It's so anything. funny. So there's another phenomenon that I've noticed is that like when it's over, the main girl I'm with is like, so is that bitch gone? What's going on? Did we, did, you get did, your rocks off did, and you're did, like, okay, she got to go. Did that bitch go? Is Did she make it? And meanwhile, I'm texting like, hey, uh, hope you got home okay. Is everything cool? Do you need anything? We, we had a great time with you. Hope you made it. And then... <laughs> Girls in the bathroom was like, is that bitch home? Is she gone here? Is she gone yet? I was like, damn, man, that's crazy. Girls are ruthless sometimes. They are definitely ruthless. They are. So, but, but what helps you? So the thing is for you, the thing that allows you to compartmentalize it is that you know internally if things don't work out, you're okay. Yeah. I I have. But, but does the jealousy exist though? Is it in there somewhere? I can't think of any time that I've ever been jealous in the relationship. The yeah. only time that I will ever show any, what a guy would consider being jealous yeah. is if you're doing something inappropriate in my um in my opinion if you're crossing boundaries and then i confront you about it yeah it might come off to you like i'm being jealous like why do you care if i like this girl's photos yeah. why do you care if i hit this girl up but you're crossing my boundaries yeah i'm already offering you threesomes i'm already giving you a very good life there's no reason to go do things behind my back so now if you do those things you're crossing my boundaries mm. but that's not out of jealousy that's you not respecting my boundaries yes But when it comes to like other girls, like if someone were to come and sit on his lap or like try to talk to him, I would probably stare at him from across the room. Be like, can we, can we bring her home? Is it going to work out? Oh, so it's like Stockton and Malone. Is that one of the pick? The who? Stockton and Malone. I don't know what that is. They are a, two, a pair of teammates from the Utah Jazz that both of them went to the Basketball Hall of Fame and all they did was run this play where they screamed. It doesn't matter. They're teammates. Teammates. Two guys? Two guys. 
and they they crossed swords? No. Oh. I, at least I don't know that they did. That may have happened. That'd be kind of a weird Carl Malone Tag story. Human. Yeah. There's a lot of people laughing right now. All right. So um, so that's that part is uh, really interesting. So that's how you deal with it. Because I know for a lot of women, they have an issue with that. Where they're like, Don't do it if you're that kind of girl. Yeah, for sure. You have no business offering threesomes or attending threesomes, A, if you're not really bisexual. Don't allow yourself to get pre like peer pressured into it just to fulfill this mind. If you think you have to do it because you're going to lose your man, he's not the man for you. Um, you're not going to enjoy yourself. You're going to feel differently mm -hmm. 100% the next morning. Uh, I mean... So have you done that? Have you felt differently the next morning? I felt like I want to do this again. Okay. Like I was like, oh my God, that was fun. Where has this been my whole life? Yeah. Let's do that again. But I've never looked at either one of the two people and been like, what the fuck? Yeah. So, Again, I only did it with someone I trusted. So, so here's another thing. I've heard this reaction frequently as well, which is the girls like the first time I did it, I was nervous to see my man with another girl. I had no idea how I was going to feel. And, and then, I had that feeling and too. Then, and then the, every girl says the same thing. Like after it happened, I was so turned on by it. I wanted to do it all the time. I've never had yeah. a single girl other than, other than Brandy who didn't say that she was d jealous of the other girl. She was just not attracted to her dude anymore. Other than Brandy saying that, every other girl was like, yeah, after the first time I did it, it's like I wanted to keep doing it. I had this idea built in my head like for the, my entire life. Like, oh, my God, what would it really be? Is it really just a fantasy thing? Mm -hmm. Or if I, it actually went through with it, yeah. would I still feel the same? And the very first time that we did it, I, t I said to him, like, I don't know how this is going to feel for me. So we're just going to have to take it like yeah. little baby steps. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> go. The first five minutes, I was revving through it yeah. and then wanted to do it again. But yeah, there is those moments where you don't know how you're going to feel. You have no idea, especially if it's the first time. Yeah. And if it's with someone that you don't necessarily know or trust, yeah. you might not know how you're going to feel about that person or what that person's going to say or do afterwards that might cross boundaries for you. Because once you get your nut off, do you still feel the same way? Yeah. Every day, every time we do it afterwards, I was obsessed with her. Obsessed? With my girl. The next day, I just wanted to like take, I just wanted to go to the mall with Why? her. Why? Because... Because from my standpoint, there, everybody feels a bit of FOMO in their life. Could I be somewhere else doing something else with someone else that might be more fun? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You ever go to a club and you're like, maybe this other club's better, or you're dating someone, you're, this other person's better. When we would do that, the next day, I knew unequivocally, I didn't want to be anywhere else with anyone else, and it just felt so incredible that I was just like, I just was was obsessed with her the day after. I remember always being the, obsessed that's with really her the day sweet. after. Because like, it was never, <laughs> this is the part that's really hard for women to understand, a lot of women. It's not me being with another girl. It's being, me being another with another girl with you. Mm -hmm. That's what they don't get. Right. I don't have threesomes. We have threesomes. That's the part they don't get. Mm -hmm. They think it's just one of these things. It's like this excess extra privilege they get. They don't understand. It's just a whole nother thing. Because a lot of women only do it Hope, in hopes to keep a man, or, or, or they do, or they do it because they were on, they, they were doing they were doing a bunch of blow, or they were with a celebrity. I can't imagine that someone can fake like. If you don't you're think not really... women? No, no, no. Like I, you should hear these stories. Uh, if we ever get, um, I'm not gonna say who it is, but she was a groupie. Groupie. She spent an entire summer with Machine Gun Kelly, traveling with him, and they she she's like they would have threesomes every night with different women all the fucking time. She was like, and she I, wasn't um, by. She was bi. No, that's my point. Like yeah, these some, women no, no, that are no, no, not but, really but, bi. But a lot of the women weren't bi. They just wanted to fuck Machine Gun Kelly. Ew. Yeah. My drive is that I love to see him having a good time and being pleased. Yeah. I love knowing that he's enjoying himself. The same way that for someone's birthday, you buy them a gift or you throw them a party. What's the drive behind that? You want to see them happy, sure, exactly. right? You love that person. You want to see them happy. It's something that we can both partake yeah. in and still me feel like what I'm doing is bringing him happiness yes. or love or joy or whatever in the moment, you know? Yeah. And that's the other part that women don't understand is that me as a man, I want exactly what you just said. I want to see her happy also, but she might not be aware that this is something that she could do that would make her happy. So you'd let me get banged up by three guys. If uh, it made me happy, if it made you happy, I really? just wouldn't, I wouldn't be your boyfriend, but I would, <laughs> if you wanted to do it, <laughs> I would, I would, I would support you, but I wouldn't, we wouldn't be in a relationship. Then. Right. That's the only thing I support people, whatever. I am a true libertarian. Like I do whatever you want to do. My point, my point is for my personal bound, there's this like this inner circle that I have. And like for a female to be friends with me, I don't care what she does sexually because we're just friends. Right. But for a female to date me, there's a couple of rules, but a female actually wants to be the CEO. Because if you're my girlfriend, you're the CEO of the company. I'm the chairman of the board, but you're my CEO. Right. You represent the company. In order for you to make that executive, to make the executive suite, you have to meet a certain set of standards. Does right. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I would not be in a committed relationship with someone who was doing OF porn with someone who wasn't me. Does that oh. make sense? 
Oh, I know tons of dudes yeah, who do no. this. They're dating a girl who's on OF and she doesn't do guy girl porn anymore, but she has videos up from her previous relationships. Negative. Not gonna happen. No. Um uh, naked philanthropist, uh, Kaylin Ward. Do you know who she is? She was the number one creator on all of OnlyFans. And she she started, uh, she was dating this one male porn star and they would make, they would film together and then she started, she stopped seeing him. But she's making more money than any, whatever number Danielle Bregoli, she's the highest of all, of everyone. And she starts seeing this dude who's like, I think he's bisexual. He's like very, very skinny. He plays in a rock and roll band, something like that. And she doesn't film with him. So she goes back and like post video. I don't know if she's posting old videos or if she's going back to see her ex just to film with him while she still has a boyfriend. No, 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 no. That's a boundary I would not even consider someone like crossing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, I ready? Let's 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 go to double standard. Let's get everyone pissed off at Michael. Ready? Oh Is a double standard here. Polyamory does not work for men. Polyamory works for women. Polygyny works for both. There you go. I just said it. Okay. Polyamory, you have more options than any dude you've ever dated as soon as you guys break up. If you guys go to a swingers resort, who like he wants to go hook up with a bunch of girls and you want to go hook up with a bunch of guys, men are going to be a hundred times more receptive to you than they will be to him. And I've seen it with my own eyes when I go to hedonism in Jamaica. These couples that are swinging, what they're not swinging. It's a girl like getting seven dudes trying to bang them at the same time, and guys like barely getting a make out. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's not the same. Polyamory does not when, when if a girl is asking you for an open relationship, I don't think she respects you enough to care about you being with other women. But right. right? But if you have a polygynous relationship, we're both with other women. That's the difference. That's what I believe. Monogamous also works, but monogamy also works a little bit more for women than men. That's what, that's what I believe. So anyway, I know that's like a lot of people don't believe that. Like, no, poly, polyamory is the same for both. It's not the same for both. Women get more penis I am monogamish. Monogamish. I am monogamous with sprinkles of Polyg sums. So polygyny. The word's polygyny. Uh, monogamish. Okay. Because well. we're not dating these women. It's yeah, but, like but a, you're with them. It's polygyny. It's, it's a polygyny. once in a like. It's still polygyny. Okay. It's monogamy interspersed with periods of polygyny. That was that. That would be the Latin term for what you do. <laughs> you're also uh, you're also into homogamy, which I'll, I could go into a long time. Oh, uh, homogamy. So hypergamy is you, you constantly trying to chase after like movie stars and stuff like that. Me? You're you're not. Oh. So, so you're you're homogamous, which means you never mind. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll talk about this some other time. Um. So many big words. Yes, lots of big words. <laughs> Homogamy. But your man is high status to you for different reasons other than movie star and like trying to impress you with money. Your man, yeah. your man and you have a connection and you're very physically attracted to him. Mm -hmm. There you go. Big dick helps, but good. There we go. Mm -hmm. It helps for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So here we go. The, the other thing I want to talk to you about, the old days with uh, 14. At, okay, 14 parties. At. Um, Hyde. H Hyde. Dorm days. What's dorm days? Do you remember at, at uh, um, Hard Rock where they would rent out entire floors? Oh, you never went to dorm days. Never even heard of that. Every club had their own suite inside of Hard Rock. And then the, the end suite was a huge industry party that turned into just absolute chaos and madness. You don't remember What? This? No. You never went to dorm days. It might days. have been pre my years moving here. Do you remember Vanity and Body English? Yeah. Okay. And Body English, my 21st Vanity, birthday. Vanity, Body English, and Rehab. So every year they would have this thing called dorm days where every club would get their own thing. Uh, do you remember the prom at the bank? Yeah, because J-Rock was always the king. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this. Yes. And now I remember that you think. Uh, can you talk about those old industry events? That's what drew me to the city. That's what. That's why I'm still here. I never clothes. attended that. The 14 parties were fun because at the time we were, were, I was working Excess, and we would have like more often than not we would have outings. Yeah. And I don't drink and I don't party. Yeah. So I would only go out to these places if it was like for a work outing, but they were always the cool. I was just telling him this the other day. They were themed. Like one was like a neon superhero theme. And then isn't it fucked up? We don't do these anymore. Why? It was always so much fun. I feel like Vegas has turned more into a partying and, and driven towards um, visitors than it is for the locals anymore. It's not the same that it used to be for well, the of locals. Of course. I mean, of course, like, yeah, because a, a accountant's not going to look in. A, a, an accountant doesn't understand why when we used to do those comps at uh, SDK, do you remember those Monday comps? Uh -huh. Did you ever do those? Okay. Those were like everyone Magnum Mondays. Mm hmm. When we'd go do that, an accountant looks at, what's this comp do? It's like, oh, it helps sales. It's like, I don't see where this helps sales. You should get rid of these. 
right? That's what accountants did. And like they, cause they don't see it quite the same way that we did, but like the Tuesday parties, the thing is there used to be a Tuesday party every Tuesday when you go out to a club, like every night there was a themed industry party. And now same with they, Wednesdays, they, yeah. they just don't do it. Now there's, yeah. the, there's a spring bash. They do it. Omnia. And then there's uh, what's the, there's a couple more they do at Omnia that's really good. You remember she's one of a kind over at mm -hmm. One Oak, which was really fun. Love that they made pillows with the girls' faces. I had on my it. pillows and my yeah, candle. Pillow. Yeah. Um, I used to be part of a previous company that did an award ceremony. They made <laughs> that you, you remember award. Yeah, we're not, I got we're a champagne. That. Yes. The, yeah. This, we're not going to say their name. <laughs> yes. I remember that. I used to do that. Um, yeah, those were man, those were so fun. And like the thing those is, were the most fun. Parts no one guess. wouldn't go. Everyone, everyone went. Everyone went yeah. to that shit. Yeah. It was so fun back then, man. It we was. would do those. It was a better time. Part. Like Haddon tries to do some at Excess yeah. sometimes. Um, and they do this, this, some jungle parties, industry parties at, at Zoop. The now, Art of the Wild outside. and shit. So Art of the Wild is not an industry event. Art of the Wild is for tourists. Oh, okay. Yes, because you buy tickets. People from outside buy tourists. What I'm talking about is uh, the Master Swordsman at Pure. Do you remember that shit? Mm -mm. Oh, you remember it? Never went to Pure. It was closed before I even got the chance to go to it. The the promoter party. So there, there used to be these promoter competitions where promoters would come in and it would be, it'd be Noah, it'd be Adam Far Far Far, it'd be fucking um, Adam. <laughs> Zach, Adam. Zach, uh, Zach uh, Taylor, it'd be fucking uh, David Haddon, it'd be all these guys. Wild, Wild boy, boy. Wild Boy. A lot of those guys now who are like mood directors and work up in the high ups, they used to be promoters who would yeah. have these promoter parties. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it was it was just a very different time that back then. Man, it, it was, was fun. fun. It was uh, even... Um, I was nervous Brian. going out. I used to be nervous going out back then. Why? Because there were so many hot girls every time we'd Everywhere. go out. Yeah. Everywhere. It was crazy. And then here's the other thing. The irony is like, shout out to Jack Womack. I go on stage at... Um, at, at Excess every Sunday. I'm going on there tonight. And um, I used to be like, I used to see Jesse Preston up there. I'm like, Jesse, can I get in? And I couldn't get in. You remember? Stop, no. You used to let me in, but I'm saying sometimes I couldn't get up there. I, w I can't even imagine that that was a thing for you for at sure. any given oh, time. I'd say it's about 2015. I couldn't get up there. Yeah. What? I couldn't get on stage. Yeah, I could not get on stage at, at Excess. Yeah. Stop. I would have opened the rope for you. Yes. <laughs> I think I did open the rope He doesn't for you. have a fucking wristband. Don't let him up there. Yeah. I die. Those are the days. Um, the other thing I thought that was really interesting that I love about this city is that you talked about how when you live here, all the people are like, this is the best, these are the best looking people I've ever seen that live here. That's crazy yeah. to say that because it has gone down so much. You think so? It has gone down so much. There's still like more pretty people here yeah. than not pretty people. But imagine if, if we're saying that and I'm telling you that 10 times prettier hotter yeah. more fit people were here pre-2010 yeah imagine what that was like yeah no i've seen that i've seen videos of that yeah every single person walking around the casino and the pool was on, on the weekdays on, the, on week the weekdays not even the weekends on the yeah. weekdays on the weekday we're talking about locals we're not talking about the, the tourists yeah supermodels yeah like full-on supermodels yeah but i mean we still have pretty people it's just the supermodel quality Thing that we used to have everywhere mm -hmm. has gone down a little bit. Now it's a little bit more artificially enhanced pretty people. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds like my favorite. A lot of BBLs, a lot of very balloon porn star fake titties, that's become more the norm. Whereas before they were all like gorgeous Victoria's Secret models just walking around like well, I mean, I, Most of the wait staffs at these clubs don't have huge fake boobs. Agreed. Yeah. But the rest of the people yeah. in the town are all like that though. There's a lot of that, yeah. A lot of it. That, that is, there's like a, a big community here. That is a lot of that. What else do you have coming up, girl? We need you to come up with something. Like I, I keep, I keep all my stuff so on the down low. We gotta stop that. No, because I want for things to become sturdy and and solid mm -hmm. before speaking on it. Because I feel like I I always look dumb the moment I mention something. And then it doesn't pan out that way or it doesn't pan out at all. Yeah. I would just rather speak on things when I've got something really solid for somebody. I went, when I saw you like going back and forth with Sterling Cooper, I was like, man, you definitely need to have a show. I Pre-quarantine, I bought all the equipment for yeah. a podcast and it was ready to go. And then I just kept telling myself, like, who wants to listen to anything I have to say? Like, what would I even talk about? So I look at it from the fact standpoint that no one wants to listen to what I have to say. But if I make a clip and in the first three seconds somebody says something crazy, then they will start to listen to what I want to say. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just watched what Joe Rogan Experience did. 
And I just, those little clips that they make, which get more traction than his actual show does now. Yeah. Right. That's, that's all I did. I just, when you make it for other people, it works. Just and you're do it also, for you also have a lot of um, network, like people that you can yeah. reach out to for different platforms. MOA is a lot of like, uh, one of the ways I explain it to people who know Dan is like, imagine if you were just teaching what Dan Fleischman does. Yeah. Like, not the, not the business part, but just the networking part that Dan Fleischman's so good at. I like, I kind of teach it in my program. Right. It's not specifically from Dan, but it's like, no, but it's brilliant. Mind. I get it. Yeah. It's all brilliant minds. I get it. Yes. Um, very cool. Well, you know, that's cool. Jen, and we talked about Jenna Jameson mentioning that he, she wanted a threesome with you or something like that. <laughs> All the girls back in the day, I yeah. think, were like heavy in threesomes back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I don't know what happened with the celebrity girls. They just yeah. got scared. That's terrible. What happened? <laughs> Megan Fox can reach out to me. Yeah, And she, she can. can come join me. Let's talk. Megan, Megan was, uh, she just commented earlier on the show. You, Megan, ha make sure you hit her up. I'll give you her number. She can come anytime she For wants. For sure. Yeah, man. I mean, I guess, yeah. You think that she's getting heavily sexually satisfied by her by machine gun kelly uh, in his pink dress you think that's working out for her you again unpopular opinion i think it's hot yeah i not not there's a there's a fine line between a guy being a sissy and a, and, and a guy being comfortable in his sexuality yeah i think it's the first actually when i watch yeah i'm okay with a guy that's i think you should, I should you watch the interviews i i think it's the first actually so why would she be with him? I think because I've met some women uh, that are very much into that type of metrosexual guy because they had previously dated someone who was extremely aggressive and alpha. And, and they, they need something less threatening. That's exactly right. And because they like to put things in places in men's bodies, they enjoy doing that because it emasculates men and maybe that's why they do it. So we're getting pegged on the weekends. I, okay. didn't, I didn't say that, okay. but I'm saying that's something that I've seen happen before. Okay. I listen, if it's a ploy to sell more records, go get it, bro. Get that get those millions. But like if this is, you know I see the pictures I, of them and I feel like there's an extreme sexual chemistry. I do, but I think it's going the opposite direction than what you think. Oh, she's the aggressor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. That's kinda hot too though. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think she has some some chafing marks right here from the strap on. Never Wait. mind. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's just like this isn't it's just my opinion. I just thought like when I see that, what it looks like to me. Have you seen the study? This is crazy. I'd love to have your opinion on this. This idea that when women take birth control, it 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 ramps up their estrogen levels, and it causes them uh, to it makes your body think you're pregnant, so you don't have so a you period, don't get pregnant, so right. you don't get pregnant. And in doing so, what's happened is the hormonal birth control. There's been some studies on this, and they're inconclusive. There's but there's something hap something is happening. These women take this uh, hormonal birth control, and when they do so, they become less attracted to super masculine features. And when they get off the birth control because they want to have a baby with their new husband, then they get off the birth control and they look at their like weak chin cuck boyfriend, and they're like, "Oh my god, what did I do?" And then we have a fifty-three percent divorce rate. Do you think there could be anything to that? I have never heard of birth control making you. Bisexual or no, more, no, not bisexual. more attracted no. to a man with feminine qualities. No, less attracted to men with masculine qualities. That's what I'm talking about. Never heard of this. Yeah, you look up the studies. I'm just curious what you think. And I I would be curious to see what Megan Fox is on. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And canceled. There you go. <laughs> You're going to get in that, trouble. I definitely am going to get in trouble. <laughs> Jesse, where can we find you when you get your accounts back? Well, for now, it's just uh, at Jesse Preston X underscore. If I ever get my main account back, if not, that one's perfectly fine. What's the other one, though, if you do get your account back? Jesse Preston X. Oh, with Jesse no with, with no underscore. Yep. Awesome. And do you have any plans for, are you going to start a podcast? Is there anything else that you're going to do? I will if you'll come on it. Of course I'll come You'll on You'll be it. my first guest. I, there's, I'll come on. We her. swapped virginity. Yes, we did. Yes, we could do it. That, yes, I'll do one. I want you to do one and then ask a bunch of like hyper technical questions that you barely understand and like just see how far you can push me. Yeah. It's so like, okay, let's do it. Okay. Now what about the possibility of alien life having a wormhole and being able to come here to our, like just go as far in that direction. I just as you made can. my eye twitch. Just, just go <laughs> far. Just push it to the, push it to the limit. To Wait, where, no, I'm make, not giving you any warning about make, what we're doing. Make my, like break my brain. Be okay. like, well, had, had Washington not crossed the Delaware, is it true that the revolutionary troops probably would have won the war anyway? Shit like that. Just go as far in that direction. What Should do you Truman think about have the, the idea nuke? that space is not space, but it's actually another form of water and ocean? All right. So it's not because there's no, there's no matter up there. There's very, very, very few molecules. We know it's in space. 
if, if like people, if we put, we've put objects in space and watch them freeze or die or whatever, like we know it's hard vacuum. So we know it's not water. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Water is, is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom fused together. I was watching a TikTok with a theory that from our perspective, what we see is all blue in the sky in the mm. same way that when you look down at earth, all the water is blue and the way that things move in space and the mm. way things move underwater. Yeah, so so it, when we, if you watch the Star Trek, it's called a ship. It's not called a, a spacecraft, right? It's called a mm -hmm. ship the re, or spaceship. And the reason why is because it does, it, it is more like a Navy, the way a flotilla would work in space. Uh, b b rather than an air force, an air force uses air, like actual oxygen, in order to to control, manipulate, and control flight. In space, you don't have that. Everything is done by thrust. There's no there because there's nothing to, there's no air to push against. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in that case, because you would be floating, yes, it would be like space in that case, and you'd be encompassed in like these massive ships, and you would have a captain. Yes. Whereas it, in in air, you don't really do that. Air, air, there's a limit to how big airplanes can be, about the size of a C-5. That's about as big as they can be. Why do you right? know that? You can put two tanks inside of it. That's about as big as you can get. Um, so so that's that's why it would be different. But no, it's not. It's not. I understand fundamentally. Do you understand why the sky is blue? The reflection? No. Yeah, a lot of people think it's a reflection from uh, the, the ocean. It's not. You, you can stand in the middle of the desert in Africa, and it's still blue. The reason why it's blue is because there's this stuff in the uh, atmosphere called ozone, which is O3. It's three oxygen atoms together to make one O3 molecule. And when ultraviolet light hits the O3, it breaks up into an O1 and O2. The O2 is what we breathe. We breathe O2. We don't really just breathe straight oxygen. We breathe O2. And the breaking up of it absorbs the blue light. So light is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Those are the the, the colors. The the lover, co colors on the light spectrum that you can see in a prism that um, that Isaac Newton discovered in the 1680s. And so he's the one who came up with Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. What happens is green or blue, indigo, and violet are absorbed by the O3. And so because absorbed, it disperses and you see blue. And what you see is red, orange, yellow when you look up at the sun. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the sun is white, but we see it as red, orange, yellow because the blue, indigo, violet is being absorbed by the the atmosphere. Learn something new. That is why the sky is blue, and 99% of people don't know that. You taught me something. Isn't it crazy that people just don't know how this, like, such No one a, has such ever a, broken down for me yeah, or any, a, most people, a, I don't think. Such a simple, yeah, but ultraviolet. Such a simple explanation. Uh, <laughs> ultraviolet radiation literally will break apart an O3 atom and turn, or an O3 molecule and turn it into I'll have O2. to get creative with my questions for you on my podcast then. I would love it. Just contact the you, physicist. You're too and smart do. for your own good. Yeah. That's what you should do. <laughs> All right, this is my this is my favorite. I'm glad to have you back on. You're my first guest. I think you're 76 now. And this is episode 76 or something. Oh 77. my god, I thought you were saying I'm 76 years old. I was about oh, to yeah. backhand you with my big ring. For 100, I was thinking about just having my brother on. Oh, that's sweet. Well, he's he's also got some incredibly controversial views on shit. Oh. Yeah, he thinks that um Alex Jones was right about almost everything. Yeah, we should do that. How about my brother and my mom? And they just watch my mom just get super embarrassed. <laughs> That'd be a great idea. Does your mom sure. know you do all this? Yeah, she yeah. watches some of it. She stopped though because, like, some of the things she just doesn't like me here like to hear me say. The threesomes. It's not the threesome stuff. It's just that like she still like lives in this Old Testament belief of of how the world is, you know. And like being a medical professional, she was a nurse for a long time. I can at least get her to the point of I'm like I'm a Christian, but I can at least get her to the point of uh, natural selection. Like right. at least get her to the point of evolution. You do believe in evolution, mom. Yes, I believe in evolution because she was a nurse. It's very hard to be in the medical profession and not believe in evolution right. when you see that a fucking all mammals have like But it's 90. contradictory of your of your religious yeah, beliefs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but we didn't know. Here's, here's one of my favorite ones. Um, In the book of Genesis says, go forth and multiply. And I'm like, in the book of Genesis, when that line was written, there were 50 million people on the planet. Okay, 50 million. That line did not, not only did that not line not say the word billion, which we have 8 billion people on the planet, the person who wrote the line didn't understand the concept of the term billion, and there was no word in their language for billion. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, when you say go forth and multiply, I think we're good. I think we we're did. Okay. I think we did the multiplying, and I think yeah. we're good. 
And so what happens though is fundamental as Christians are like, no, we need to have more children, more children, more children. And I like, I want to take them to Managua. I want to take them to fucking Kenya and be like, look at this poverty that's been created. You really think we, we need, need more, more children when half the planet is living on $1 a day? You think we need more? It's a, that's the part that's just so crazy to me. Like yeah, we don't, no. we, like the, the population of Indonesia and places like this, no. I, Elon Musk is abjectly incorrect about at this. At least you have a forward enough open-minded mother mm -hmm. to have that kind of yeah, open for sure. dialogue with. For I would sure. never be able to sit my Jehovah's See, Witness parents and talk down about evolution and talk about evolution. Could, could my I? dad would fight you. Could I? Could I talk to your dad about evolution? You, that would my be dad so great. would fight you tooth and nail. Yeah. And the, the arrogance that comes with being Jehovah's Witness, like what they, they, they call their religion the truth. Yeah, of course. They call it I mean, the truth. Most of them do, yeah. Hey, Sunday morning. Yeah. Seven fifteen in the morning. Would you like to learn the truth? Yeah. I swear to God, I, I mm -mm. no. But yeah. at least you have that open dialogue with your mom. She's able to to listen and maybe learn something. When, when we go a little further, she doesn't really like to go. Like, want to have the discussion about oh, you know those those little kids in Poland in 1939 that all got thrown into concentration camps and later into ovens. Did they not pray hard enough? Is that what happened? Like people don't Religious like to, don't want to yeah, hear that. People don't like to have these conversations. No. All those, you know, those all those uh, kids dying of cancer in the hospital. They didn't the, pray hard enough. Yeah, all those Tutsis back in uh, 2000, 1992 in Rwanda that were killed by Hutus. That one million people were murdered in one in one hundred days. They killed one million people. Did they not pray hard enough? Is that what happened? Is that what's going on? When Pol Pot murdered every single educated person, everyone with a college degree who or who wore glasses, they killed all of them. Do, did they just not pray hard enough? Is that what, what happened? Is all the aristocracy, some of them were devout Catholics in France in 1715 during their revolution. And they all were, do you know the guillotine was invented so that they could cut people's heads off faster back in the, the French revolution? Did they just didn't pray hard enough? Is that what happened? Is that what's going on? No, dude, life is unfair. That's what happened. I think God has a sense of humor. I think he looks at us, <laughs> he, he loves us, but he looks at us like, you know, we're an ant colony. That's kind of the way he sees us. You, you know believe in God? Of course. Yeah, I do. But like the, this concept that we're like, you know, that th th because this group prays harder than this group, well, then then make the fucking superpower show up and then, you know, defeat the enemy. But it doesn't work that way. I just think God is a little bit more random than we, we like to attribute. I've had that conversation with my dad. Like, yeah. the children born in huts in the middle of Africa, like, where, why would they be punished when Armageddon comes? Yeah, well, the answer... They didn't have the... The, the, the theological answer is because of original sin, but that, to me, another answer could be because of natural selection. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the answer that I have. No, yeah. Anyway, sorry to go off in this deep end. Thank you guys for watching us. This has been great. I've been wanting to have Jesse on again. You were hilarious. I hope you do start a show. I think it's it really will. funny. Uh, we've got a lot of great clips from this. Uh, if you guys want to like, share, and subscribe, we really appreciate it. We've got a lot of great events coming up. If you guys are interested in uh, coming up, Jesse comes on several of our calls for the Men of Action Mentoring Program. Go to moamentoring.com. Make sure you do not do it at work, though. It is not safe for work for what you're going to see on there. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. Uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. We've got a lot of great guests coming up, uh, and we'll see you all next week.